Yes, I am. All right. Um, this meeting will now commence at 6.05 p.m. The first order of business is roll call. May we please commence roll call? Uh, yes, first of all, I wanna say, I know we have some new members, so welcome. If I mispronounce your name, please do let me know. If you're also here and I mispronounce your name, please also do let me know. Um, okay, so to begin, we have student trustee Bravo. Student trustee Bravo. Bravo absent, President Kumar. Here. Kumar present, Vice President Ahmed. Here. Ahmed present, Treasurer Nia Manuri. Here. Nia Manuri present, Chief of Staff Almendras. Present. Almendras present, Chairwoman Hamad. Present. Hamad present, Chairwoman El Adawi. Chairwoman El Adawe. Present. El Adawe present. Chairwoman Nadala. Present. Nadala present. Chairwoman Ovide. Present. Ovide present. Chairwoman Show. Present. Show present. Speaker of the House is Tancheva. Present. Tancheva present. Representative Petineo. Here. Petineo present. Representative Kasowski. Representative Arthur Kasowski. Kasowski absent. Representative Tanaibat. Present. Did I pronounce your name, your last name correctly? <laughs> it's actually pronounced the name that. Okay, sorry for that. Present. I'll practice. Um, Representative Nehi. Representative Nehi. Nehi absent, representative Adam oh, Ortiz. Uh, so sorry, I think she's here. I think she heard just, she was having mic trouble or something. Because I see okay. her name on the list. Okay, present. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, representative Nehi present, representative Adam Ortiz. Present. Adam Ortiz present, representative Taylor. Present. Taylor present, representative Abdel Salam. Present. Abdel Salam present. Representative Silvaraj. Um, I. Okay. I believe. Uh, Representative Silvaraj, he has an excused absence. Yes. Uh, Silvaraj excused absent. Representative ba B. Representative B. B absent, Representative Fernandez. Excused absence. Thank you. Fernandez excused absent, Representative Villa Gomez. Present. Villa Gomez present, Representative Hack. Present. Hack present, Representative Nguyen. Present. Nguyen present. Representative Alsari. Representative Nora Alsari. I see that she's in the meeting, but I don't hear a response. Um. Okay, I'll mark her as present. Um, Representative Bilba Sigamani. Oh, present. Bilba Sigamani present. Representative Khan. 
Present. Khan present. Representative Malik. Representative Sarah Malik. Malik absent. Representative Henry. Present. Henry present. Representative Chris Mann. Present. Chris Mann present. Representative Bora. Present. Bora present. And that concludes roll call. Uh, Danny, just to bring to your attention, I see that uh, Representative Kowalski has entered the room, so I will mark him as present. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, the next order of business is reading and approval of the minutes. Please take this time to read over the minutes. All right, are there any changes to the uh, minutes? If not, the minutes will stand as approved. The next order of business is reading and approval of the agenda. Please take this time to read over the agenda. Point of information, Daisy. Um, so if there's a resolution that's being presented, we'll have time to discuss the resolution once it's presented, right? I don't have to add it to the items for discussion. Um, do you have a resolution that's not on here? No, no there is, there is. I was just asking. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay. yeah, so we have time for discussion. Okay, cool. And you're also free to bring it up during items for discussion if you'd like to. It's up to okay. you. Um, any corrections to the agenda? Yeah, I would like to uh, add an item for discussion. Okay, uh, what item for discussion would you like to add? Um, USG collaboration with uh, sports teams. All right, just give me one second. I'm gonna make sure I write that down. You said it was USG Collaboration with sports team teams? Yes. All right. There has been a motion to add an item for discussion, USG collaboration with sports teams. All those in favor of making this amendment, please say aye. 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 That was definitely three people. Uh, okay. All those opposed, please say nay. Does anyone, does anybody abstain? Okay, um, you guys have to vote. Either way, yes, no, or abstain, you have to vote, all of you. Uh, so we're gonna do that again. All those in favor of adding this amendment, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's better. All that opposed, please say nay. Does anybody abstain? Okay, the ayes have it, and this item for discussion has been added. Are there any other corrections to the agenda? Okay, if not, then the agenda will stand as approved. The next order of business is public comment. Do we have any public comment? All right, no public comment. In that case, we can move on to the next order of business, which is guest speakers. Um, I have actually received a request due to a scheduling conflict 
to switch the guest speakers. Um, so can we hear from, or Matthew, can you introduce our second guest speakers, please? Yes, yeah, so um, uh, the guest speakers are uh, Sarah Ziff and Rajan. Uh, they're from the UIC Chess Club. Sarah is president of the Chess Club and Rajan is the, the secretary. Do I just begin? I, I've never been to one of these things before. Okay, um, sorry, I, I've never been in student government, but you guys are doing great. Um, can I, <laughs> this is bad. Uh, can I share my screen if that's fine with you guys? Can I do that or no? I can, okay. Thanks. One second. Oh, not that, my bad. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna present. Um, so before I begin, uh, I just wanna say thank you for having me and my secretary, Rajan, and Matthew is our public relations chair for Chess Club. Um, so thank you for listening to us and everything. It really means a lot. Um, okay, so a little bit about Chess Club. Um, who we are and what we do. But before I want to like get into like all the logistics, I just want to talk about me, my favorite topic. Um, I just want to go over like how I got into chess club and what my what my dreams are for this club. So for so, for most of you guys who don't know me, um, my grandfather was a general medic in the U.S. Army. Um, when he came, he fought in the Vietnam War. When he came back um, and he, as he got older, he suffered from severe schizophrenia and PTSD. Um, it got to the point where he was very violent. He had episodic tantrums all over the place. He would throw things. He would make up random stories. He, he really couldn't help, help himself. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I would never, I've never even talked to the guy. I don't know anything about him. He doesn't know anything about me. I lived with my grandfather, but it felt like he wasn't even in my life. I remember the specific time that I took him out to ice cream at Oberweiss for all you Naperville folks. Um, and I, there was this chess board on, in Oberweiss and he just started playing. And I brought him milkshakes and I was like, grandpa, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm playing chess. And I was like, how do you play chess? And he taught me chess and through that, he began to talk. You know, and not, he didn't have his violent outbursts. He started talking about, you know, his life, his life with my grand, my late grandmother, his, his life growing up, raising my father, um, his life talking about his journey through um, the army and being a medic and going to medical school and stuff like that. He started actually talking to me. And then he asked me questions about my life. And that was the moment where I realized that I could actually have him in my life. And ever since then, up until his passing, I played chess with him every single day. So when I came to UIC and I realized that we didn't have a chess club at UIC, I immediately turned and I was like, we need to make a chess club. Like I want to have a legacy that resembles my grandfather. And when I did make that chess club with the original president, Taya, um, I realized that many of our members have similar stories. Our vice president, Ryan, he, he couldn't, he actually built a relationship upon his father and his grandfather through chess too. So for us, chess isn't just a game to us. It isn't just like a club that we're in or isn't even part of an application. It's an escape. It brings our family together. It brings, it brings joy to me. And I will always dedicate a huge part of the reason why my grandfather was able to get to know me was because of chess. So what does chess means to UIC? Well, we are the first and only chess club at UIC. Um, we were created in 2019. I was vice president. My best friend, Taya, was president. She graduated last year. Our mission is to promote the art of chess while playing fairly, authentically, and justly. We have a strict no cheating policy. We also represent the University of Illinois at Chicago by being the official chess club. We're actually in multiple tournaments. Our most prime tournament right now is through CCL, which is uh, Collegiate Chess League. We're actually, we're actually doing actually pretty well. Actually, we've won most of our games. Um, we have a tournament every Saturday. We have amazing players. Um, two of them are actually in this meeting, Matthew and Rajan, um, great players. 
We also teach the game to chess um, to those willing we learn. We have a variety of players. We have someone who's highly rated and I bet by the end of the semester, he's gonna be considered a grandmaster. And we also have someone who just learned chess just this past month. So we have a wide variety of people who come into our club. We also represent UIC in external tournaments. As I said before, we represent UIC in nationally and globally. Uh, we also host our own events. We just had a tournament last Monday, um, which went great. Congratulations for John, because he won. Um, uh, we have a weekly meeting every week. We have about 15 members who show up to each meeting, which is like pretty much. Uh, we have more than that usually, but with exams, we have around 15. We also have a partnership with Chicago Chess Association, the CCA. Um, we have a shared resource room in the sixth floor of Student Center East. They humbly provide us with glass chess pieces. We have a bunch of books written by grandmasters that they lend to us, um, but due to COVID-19, unfortunately, we haven't been able to receive those just with clerical and sanitation issues. Um, CCA also uh, gives us student opportunities for bird ser board services, um, and we also have paid opportunities. Um, we're also going to add another thing called meeting new grandmasters. Uh, we have grandmasters from Israel come in and stuff like that, and our members get to meet them and listen to them. So about the product, this will be our first ever UIC Chess Club merchandise. We've never had anything before this. We've Chess Club has never represented UIC in this way before. Um, it'll give our members a sense of identity with UIC Chess Club and in deliberately with UIC. Um, speaking about morale, we're gonna have my secretary Rajan speak on this topic more, Rajan. Hi everyone. Uh uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity of uh, representing the chess club in front of the undergraduate committee. Um, so, yeah, regarding uh, the chess uh, that is since, as, as Sarah mentioned, that this is the first time that we are, um, you know, we have like an official committee and we are uh, actively um, trying to get a different, like diverse members uh, involved in, in the game of chess. And uh, I, I am I'm also um, personally um, trying to, you know, get ask around in my department where I work and with my um, with my lab mates to, uh, you know, get more involved. And um, believe it or not, um, we are um, a lab of five people. And trust me, I uh, they used to see me, uh, you know, playing like a game of chess um in my break time or like while having a lunch or something and today i can see three other people while working playing on the on, on the screen and i'm like dude i am working why why like how how are you guys you know getting the time to play and it's just that it's it's very um easy to spread <laughs> uh, believe it or not um and it, and people are getting more um interested towards the game of chess and what um uh, and the other thing is that, uh, as Sarah mentioned, that we have participated in the Collegiate Chess League, where, um, where literally um, around 47 or 48 university across the country are, are, are participated, have participated in, uh, in the tournament. There are like six divisions, and each division has like eight universities. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like a proper group stage, uh, knockout stages, everything. It's, it's, it's a whole um, entertainment package. Um, so what we were thinking that to, to promote this and to keep things more involved, we could uh, initiate like, like, um, like a tournament uh, within Chicago universities. Um, uh, we, ha we have Northwestern, we have uh, U Chicago, we have Illinois Institute, uh, DePaul, and, and we have like, we, yeah, we were just talking the other day and like six or seven names popped up. Um, so yeah, we were thinking that you know we we could we could initiate that if if no no uh, if other colleges are not initiating it, um, and uh, yeah, and the other thing is with with uh, COVID, I think it it has been all the more difficult to um, you know uh, since we are practicing social distance, it's it's been a bit difficult for us to uh, keep people involved in the game of chess, and uh, so the only option that remains if you if you are not playing in person is playing it online and the thing is to um to uh to uh, 
uh, organize these tournaments and to organize um, uh, you know active participation from different members uh, we we do require um, kind of a premium membership on the online interfaces uh, maybe uh, chess.com or live chess these are the these are two of the main ones um, and yeah i mean um, i think uh, once we have the support of of the undergraduate committee i think uh, it would be easier for us to promote uh, and and keep and involve more students uh, in this semester and in our future semesters that's all i have as rajan touched upon um it is very hard to play chess online i have to we create a zoom link every week and we have everybody there we make sure we talk get a little conversation going and make sure that on chess.com we have tournaments going but end of the day you know chess is about sitting face to face and playing it you know it's not supposed to be meant to play on an online platform it now i'm gonna most people might hate me say this but it doesn't work um, and we've struggled a lot this entire semester trying to keep up the morale because it's been very down, you know, like I sit on this chair practically like all day and it's just really hard. So having something that's tangible, something that represents all of us, something that everybody wears, something that's, you know, something that unifies the entire club is a big asset as to like, no, even though that we're miles apart from each other, we're still connected together. And here's our design. We had a little vote um, this past weekend to decide on our t-shirt. Um, I know it's a little blurry because I took it off the, the email thing. So please disregard that. But we are estimating around 20 t-shirts from Custom Inc. This does include um, individual shipping. Now, what does this mean? Is that it'll go from Custom Inc factory all the way to their, our members' houses to prevent the spread of COVID-19. They have this cool, awesome shipping thing where it's, everything is sanitized and everything is making sure that it's getting to their our members' houses clean and nice and sanitized. And it's personalized shipping to minimize contact with everyone. And also it makes it makes the tangible thing that everybody can wear to our banquets at the end of the year, our tournaments that we we're going to host more, our other internal tournament that we're hosting in March. So this is our little crest that we all created um, at the back. It does say UIC Chess Club slash uh, little x undergraduate student government. We are giving you guys um, voice on our t-shirts. So if you guys don't like anything on this, please, we'll take the criticism. Um, but we do want to uh, promote you guys on our t-shirt as well. And then flame this army, because why not? You know, we are the flames. So Matthew will talk a little bit more about why our, our uh, collaboration is worth it. Matthew? Yeah, so a collaboration um, between the chess club and USG would be beneficial because, you know, we're, it's a newly established club about 2019, as um, we've mentioned, but, you know, it grew to 50 members as well. And during uh, this COVID time, um, we get an average of 15 students per meeting um, every week. And I, I'd say that's pretty impressive. Because, um, you know, we, we all know the struggles of getting people to come to events and meetings, but, you know, Chess Club effort, effortlessly uh, gets 15 people. Um, just in general, chess would be beneficial for students because, you know, um, many students are looking for new hobbies. Um, research also shows that chess can be beneficial for your academics. Um, it improves memory. Uh, as with uh, Sarah's story, um, uh, her grandfather was able to uh, remember his uh, his past life um, when when seeing chess. Uh, it can improve your uh, you know your math and reading skills, and um, it also reduces stress when you're playing. And the sources are on the bottom for that. You know, having uh, having a strong chess club would benefit UIC because it would better uh, UIC's image. Um, Sorry, just I'm sorry about that. So yeah, um, having a strong chess club would um, better UIC's image. Um, you know, we're doing well in these tournaments, and these tournaments are run nationally. So it'd be great for uh, for UIC, you know, to uh, tell people coming to uh, like new students, telling them that 
you know, UIC is also, you know, has a strong chess club uh, team. Uh, chess organizations also give scholarships to uh, chess club members, uh, usually, because um, chess club, um, you know, like uh, the chess uh, association usually gives uh, scholarships to chess club members. And UIC Chess Club can uh, be another outlet to promote USG and uh, USG missions. The last thing I just wanna say is one, thank you for letting us speak with you guys. But number two, I really want these t-shirts to be sent out, not only as like a thank you to our members for sticking up with us this entire year, um, especially last semester when it was very, very bumpy and we got to this point, but also because I want each and every single member to realize that they're not alone in this. You know, I want them to realize that when they're behind a screen, you know, when I'm playing music through Zoom, they're not there sitting alone. You know, they're face to face with us. We are a family. I've said that from the beginning of the start of the semester. I may be the president, but I am a person and I am a person who loves chess. I am exactly the same person and the person that sits next to me, across from me, through the Zoom link, they're all equal to me. And having a one unified t-shirt where we can wear it and, and be proud of ourselves and proud of our chess heritage and proud of the fact that we are unified is something that's memorable, but it's also inspirational for other young freshmen walking in to UIC and saying, yeah, I love chess and I have a history with it and I'm going to play with it and I'm going to be part of this family. So thank you. I'll take questions. <laughs> Thank you guys. Does anybody have any questions? Um, before I like say uh, my thoughts, I have a quick question. Um, will you guys be selling the shirts to your members or giving them away? We will be giving them away. Okay. So actually your story was very touching and uh, I really appreciate you guys coming here and presenting to us and reaching out to USG for funds. And another thing is I was actually a member of the chess club in my high school and I competed uh, like, and the team I was probably the worst player my school has ever seen, but <laughs> I didn't really <laughs> care about winning. Like I really liked the game and I actually own a chess board. It's like one of my most precious possessions. So I really appreciate the fact that you um, started this at UIC. And yeah, I want to join uh, as soon as I like get my plate emptied up a little bit, but thank you for being here and uh, good luck with the rest of the semester. You should, you know, you should send me your email. I'll add you to the like, mailing list, you know, <laughs> and you'll get those meetings every week. You can join whenever, okay? We would Thanks. love to have you. Seriously, we actually, we would love all of you guys. If you guys love to play chess or want to learn, we would love to have you guys. I, trust me, I am also the worst person to play chess too. <laughs> I, I, am, I may be the president, but I am not competitive. <laughs> yup, rating of 20, yup, good. It's okay, hon. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments? I do have a question. I'm not sure if I missed this, but what is the price per t-shirt and how much is the total funding requested? Um, so without shipping and tax, it's $14.83 per t-shirt. With shipping, it's $7 per person. And since we're estimating it for 20 t-shirts, it's adding on to that list. So I believe, I gave the screenshots to Matthew, but I believe it's like 400. Isn't there a resolution presented? I think that's where it says the exact cost. Yes, yeah, so um, it's four hundred. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? Um, if no one has a question, I have a question. How does this work? Like, what is like the next thing? I'm so sorry. I've never been. I've never done this before. So how does this work? Um, so basically we just ask for questions and then if there is no questions, you guys are welcome to stay or you're, you're welcome to leave, it's up to you. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, awesome. 
thank you guys so much for uh listening to us um yeah for john <laughs> anything to say <laughs> i i guess yeah uh, that's it uh, uh thank you for uh listening to us uh and thank you for give, giving us a chance to uh, represent um, our club. Um, and we really hope that we can, uh, you know, just expand from here on uh, from this semester and the future semesters. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your week. Um, thank you. Yeah, you guys are you great. You guys, you guys, honestly, this is pretty cool. I've never actually done a roll call before, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So, um, Kayla, may you please present our next guest speaker? Uh, yes. Hi, everybody. Um, so, right now, we're going to have a virtual mural. Um, tour by the Latino Cultural Center. So do you guys have a screen share to something? I think you should be able to screen share. Yes, Try I have the ability to screen share. Oh. Sorry. So let me grab. Well, first, before we do the screen share, I just want to reintroduce ourselves. Um, so hi, everybody. Again, I'm Lauren. I'm the Civic Engagement Educator at the UIC Latino Cultural Center. And I'm happy that I've recognized a few of your names from Las Ganas and a few from like our public programs and our sign in sheets, <laughs> which is really great. Um, so I'm happy that we can be here. I wish that we were in the center to do this with you all, but I'm really happy that we were able to engage you all even virtually. But I will be joined today by our wonderful student educator, Makaya, and I'll let you introduce yourself, Makaya. Hi, everybody. I'm Makaya. Um, I'm a student studying urban planning and public policy. Um, I too used to be in USG, so it, don't call it a comeback. Here we are. Thank you so much for um, allowing us to be here. I'm excited. So you can all see what I'm sharing with you, correct? Oh, one second. There we go. Okay. So first, I'm just going to take you on a quick, very quick PowerPoint, really fast. Um, and then I'll pass it to Micaiah. But also I just wanna check in how much time do we have? I, I just wanna be conscious of your time as well. Um, it depends on how long your presentation is. I think about 10 to 15 minutes would be a good time. Okay, um, so keep that in mind Micaiah, but I will kind of quickly go through uh, PowerPoint. So just if you're not familiar with the UIC Latino Cultural Center, um, we are actually located in Lecture Center B on campus, so right at the quad. And our mission is to engage the UIC campus and local communities to deepen the understanding of the diverse cultural heritages and identities of Latinxes, issues affecting their lives and creative solutions they are using to improve community life. And we offer engaged learning opportunities that feature cultural and artistic expression, intercultural and civic dialogues, scholarly presentations and first voice stories. And we're still trying to maintain this even virtually through a lot of our different public programs and initiatives. Um, and we also have two internships that are available for undergraduate students. So the first is the Lead Create Change internship, which we're actually gonna be looking for interns in this, in this summer for the next academic year, if you're interested. And then we also have the Heritage Garden internship program, which is actually a collaboration between the seven centers for cultural understanding and social change. And the application for this is actually due tomorrow by 11.59 PM. Um, if you're interested. So the UIC Heritage Garden is a hands-on learning project with an internship component. So student interns work with faculty, staff, and community members to connect horticulture with environmental sustainability, cultural diversity, and social justice. Um, and you can actually find more about both of these internships on our website and the Heritage Garden website, which I could put the links in the chat in just a second, if you're interested. And then just a little bit more about us about the culture about the LCC, excuse me, and our public programs and initiatives. So we have our COVID-19 masking project, which you've been asking students and community members to submit if you are all interested. Um, so basically, we want to like think about how wearing masks, face masks, uh, to spread the man the excuse me to manage the spread of COVID-19 has become part of a new normal of life around the world. And in this project, we want to unpack this in a fun and thoughtful way. So we've been asking people to take a selfie in their favorite mask and share their stories with us, why it's their favorite mask and why they think it's important to wear masks. If you're interested, I can also put the link in that. We've been featuring that in our weekly avisos and our social media. 
uh, accounts if you're interested. And then the next one is our Climates of Inequality virtual presentations. So last semester, all of our programs followed the theme of Climates of Inequality, and we featured local and in, local environmental and climate justice leaders to talk about how frontline communities in Chicago are impacted, who are impacted by environmental pollution and climate change, and more recently by COVID-19, how are they demanding justice and putting forward a vision to create healthier and safer communities. So all of these presentations were actually recorded, which you can access, and I'll put the link in the chat as well. Um, and yeah, with that, actually, we'll pass it to Micaiah, who's going to take us through the mural, and then we're going to highlight just a few mural scenes. I know we don't have that much time with you all, but there's a lot to unpack. <laughs> Okay, hi everybody. Here we are in the LCC. Just love it here. Um, this um, this mural is called The Awakening of the Americas. It was painted in 1996 by um, a local artist um, named Hector Duarte and by also UIC students. It is the largest contemporary indoor mural in Chicago. And it, although it was painted uh, 20 plus years ago, there are still um, themes and elements of this mural that are relevant to today. Um, and it is also a living mural. So um, we have, we add things over the years, such as um, different names of different movements that have occurred in the past um, couple of decades, such as the Black Lives Matter movement, um, and even student organizations, um, such as the Fearless um, Un Undocumented Alliance, which is a um, student organization on campus that advocates for um, immigrants and migrants, um, their rights and, and, and how to be allies uh, to this population. So uh, we're not gonna be able to go over all of the, the scenes, but we can, I can give you a brief overview of what the scenes are looking like taking you around the room. So let's get it in motion. So the first scene is called The Global Citizen. Um, it is a woman with purple wings flying towards um, the city, carrying the earth in, in her right arm. Um, and so the global citizen is basically thinking about how we can be um, citizens and stewards of this earth, um, fixing the challenges that we face in the urban and natural environment. Um, and if you uh, will shift over, we have um, the Vejigantes, which are two Puerto Rican carnival masks holding up a bubble or sphere of the Puerto Rican flag inside. And this is to this is to give respect to duality. Um, in this part, we talk about gentrification. Um, we talk about land, um, specifically um, through the lens of Puerto Rico. And if you shift over here, there is um, next to the masks. There's a scene of the Zapatistas. Um, it, this is an iconic picture of a fighter defending the land rights and of um, self self determination, specifically in southern Mexico. And if we shift over here, this um, is called the Hub for Social Change. Um, we're gonna be coming back to this, but basically this is about um, the power of, of uh, social connection and, and, and collecting ourselves within these public spaces to solve issues, to celebrate. Um, if we shift over, um, this is called the Warrior Eagle and it addresses the three levels of leadership um, so like powerful leaders, um, the different like places and, 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 uh, and figureheads of like how we are able to liberate ourselves and the collective, which is very, very important. And if we shift over here, this is called the American Dream um, and shines light on, on immigration um, and the different nuances uh, and migration as well. And this pillar over here is called the pillar of the families. Um, we have, uh, and then last but not least, we have the political arts, um, the political activism and the arts featuring Lolita Lebron, which is um, an iconic nationalist um, that fought for the independence of Puerto Rico in the 1950s. Okay, so um, moving forward, when we talk about the global citizen, um, I, I sort of shone light on this already, but uh, the global citizen is something that we try to shine light on when it comes to citizenship as a whole. We understand that people um, usually think of citizenship through the lens of legality, but what does it mean for us to um, be just stewards of the earth, people who are citizens of earth who are born? We're all human beings, right? We were all born here, correct? So we wanna, under, we wanna um, expand our knowledge and like our framework of citizenship beyond um, 
the, the legal bounds. And if you um, focus in on this um, wrecking ball, this is a shining light on the fact that UIC um, is a place of gentrification. It's a place that displaced um, many groups of people, um, Black people, Greeks, Italians, uh, many other ethnic groups, including the largest Latinx population at the time. Um, and this created a huge legacy of tension between the community and the administration. Um, but people also saw it as an opportunity that maybe this uh, public research institu institution will give the local community um, a chance to broaden hor their horizons and achieve things that they weren't able to achieve if the university may not have been there. But surprise, surprise, not so surprised, that was not being fulfilled by the 1970s. And so uh, many different visionary Latinx students, faculty, staff, and local community came together and fought tirelessly for the recognition and for the support of the growing Latinx um, population of like the students on campus. Um, and so there was a lot of, of, of fighting that went into this. There was a protest where people um, were staging a sit-in at University Hall and 39 people were actually arrested until there could be an agreement made um, between the administration and the community and the students. And so um, I feel like if you've been here for like the past three years, you know that UIC, the students are never playing those games. The girls are gonna fight for what they want. And so we use this um, part of the mural to let you all know that everything that we have had is something that we fought for. So um, the Latino studies uh, course options, Latino American and Latino studies program that we know today established in 1974, um, LADES, which is the Latin American Recruitment and Educational Services Program established in 1975 and the Culture Center established in 1976 is because of people that um, understood the value of their voice, understood that they have just as much value as the next person and that when there is injustice going on, people, are, people who are perpetrating injustice are not going to give you justice. You have to get it yourself. So always advocate for yourself and always advocate for the people around you. Um, so there's that, and also an important, important, important part of our um, of our like center's history is the name. So um, a Puerto Rican professor named Rafael Centrón Ortiz was a staunch supporter of the student coalition, um, and when he died just before the center opened, the students dedicated the center to um, the uh, in his namesake, which we just stand. I just love that. It just makes my heart warm every time. Um, so moving forward to the hub for social change. So um, for reference, our carpet used to be that red color that you see right there. Um, and you see this, this fake pillar. This was supposed to give the illusion that we are breaking out of the Latino Cultural Center and going into this alternate universe of different public spaces across history and across um, Latin American culture. And so, um, when you see, you can kind of see the lecture center E. And so the quad is a center, it's a public space for activism, for running through when it's cold and it's icy, for slipping on when it's cold and it's icy. And we we have this scene in here to um, give light to, to native knowledge, first of all. Um, it's important for us to understand um, all of the all of the contributions that all cultures have given us not only european contribution to um, our learning and so it's also important for all of us to be able to understand um, why this is important why is important to celebrate why is it important to gather um, let me slow down because i really want y'all to get into this real quick so let's get into it. Um, do y'all see, since we're talking about the details, what do y'all see? Like, do y'all um, see any, like, anything that I ring, that's ringing a bell, anything look recognizable? Okay, I'll go first. So I'm seeing an igloo. What is that, Lauren? Why is that there? What does that represent? Sorry, Makai, you cut out a little bit. Can you repeat it? An igloo, the igloo. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, we have an igloo here to represent indigenous communities of the Northwest Pacific Coast. Yes. Um, does anybody else see anything that they recognize? Anything I think that there's uh, Easter Island, the heads. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so representing Polynesian cultures of the cultures off the coast of Chile. Yeah, I was going to say, are these representative of different indigenous and native cultures around the globe? Yeah, it's specifically like Micaiah said, specifically focusing on cultures and communities throughout the Americas. So we have a couple other structures that nobody has mentioned yet. Oh yeah, somebody mentioned in the chat, pyramids from, from Mexico, you're right. So we're representing Aztec and Mayan cultures, Mesoamerican cultures. What else do we have? We have a teepee. Yes, the teepee. So representing indigenous communities of the plains. Two more structures that we have here that nobody has mentioned yet. They're a little bit harder. You can zoom in. So I know it's a little blurry, y'all. It's the virtual format. And it's not this blurry in real life. So along the edge here are actually Taino Bate stones representing, or they're from the Taino cultures of the Caribbean. And you might recognize a few of the symbols if you've ever been to like Humboldt Park or like are aware of Puerto Rican culture. These are different symbols that represent different entities and beings. And then there's one more structure right over here. And this is actually a sundial from Machu Picchu. So representing Andean communities of Latin America. Thank you, Lauren. Is that all of them? All of them? Yeah, that's all. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, and so again, we have this scene to represent not only native knowledge, but also um, the places where people gather to celebrate, to exchange knowledge and exchange culture, but also to um, sort through and, and create solutions for when um, challenges commence. I mean, when we're talking about culture, we wanna also talk about um, cultures clashing. Uh, much of our lives have been shaped by cultures clashing. Um, and so we're gonna shift over to this piece. Um, what is the tone that people are getting from this piece? Are people feeling a shift? What's going on? It's a lot darker. Definitely, definitely a lot darker. Um, and it makes sense because um, this scene is to represent the destruction um, and uh, chaos that colonization can cause. So um, it's definitely important to understand that um, so much of our culture has been um, attacked. And so, so much of our identity has been attached to um, demise and to, and, to, and to torture. And so, we all, we, and while we shine light on that, we also want to shine light on uh, people fighting for justice and working for solidarity. Because um, this is how the LCC defines um, diversity by um, having many people from diverse backgrounds and unique perspectives coming together to unite our skills and assets and all of our creativity to tackle social challenges. Um, and the swirling colors in the center of this painting represent the diversity at USC and how diverse cultures can learn from one another to be a positive source of innovation. And today the LCC is one of the seven cultural centers um, for understanding and social change. And we work together on many initiatives to bring people together on campus. In our increasingly connected digital world, it's more important than ever that we have intercultural skills um, and that the centers are a space to learn more about um, others and about ourselves. Has anybody um, been to the cultural centers or uh, can anybody name any of them? Yeah, hey, um, I've been to the Latino Culture Center, obviously, and um, the Arab Culture Center. Uh, I think that's it. Oh my gosh, I'm lacking. But I should visit the other culture centers once we're back on campus for sure. But thank you so much for this. I've always like come and wondered what it all meant. And I always like just looked around to see, you know, what's going on there. So thank you for explaining all of it. Yes, of course. Um, please come to all of the centers. Lauren put a, a link to the centers in the chat so you all can um, get to know it. Um, and 
whenever we open back up, please feel free to come. Um, we have a lot going on. Um, yeah, so I think the, the um, do you want to transition over to the, the last scene, Lauren? Yes. And also, um, yeah, there's, so we have the seven centers for cultural understanding and social change. So it's just to go through them really quickly. Uh, the African American Cultural Center, the Asian American Resource and Cultural Center, the Arab American Cultural Center, which is, I'm happy that a few of you have been, um, or that you mentioned that you were, because that's the only one of its kind on a college campus in the country. Uh, the Disability Cultural Center, the Gender and Sexuality Center, the Women's Leadership and Resource Center, and then us. Um, so definitely check them out. They're also, I know that we can't visit them physically, but also they have a lot of really great virtual public programs that are everywhere. They're just doing great things. Um, and we did actually, yes, we did have the Noche de Poetas uh, at the LCC. Um, and we've actually been doing that virtually. And we just had one recently, but I think we're, we're attempting to plan another one for next semester or next month. Um, so that might be in the works as well. But yes, sorry, I'll pass it back to Makai. Thank you for that, Lauren. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to ask you guys some more questions about what you see. So um, there are a lot of physical barriers that um, I sort of want us to work through before uh, we get more into this, this part of the mural. Uh, can somebody, can anybody, a couple of people name some of the barriers that we're, we're seeing? There's like barbed wire fences. Mm -hmm. Water. Okay, so yes, there's barbed wire fences, there's water, you see a, a spider web, yes. Okay, you're into it. Uh, sorry, yeah, my light just went off, so LOL, she'd be doing that. Um, yeah, so we have all of these physical barriers um, and uh, painful barriers as well. Um, I'm glad that you pointed out that it's barbed wire. Um, we have the, the cacti. Um, and so we have these barriers that are physical, but, and we, and we use this scene to talk about immigration and migration. Um, and now that we've worked through the physical barriers, um, we want, also want to shine light on the barriers that you cannot see. Um, so what are some challenges that you all think um, are presented when it comes to immigration and migration? Mm -hmm. Abigail says family separation. Daisy says the journey. I mean, the ostracization once you get here. Mm -hmm. Malak says the sense of freedom you thought you'd find, you didn't end up finding. Come through. Come on, poetry. Yeah, I think you guys are all uh, making really, really good points. Um, and this all points to um, what we're trying to, what we're trying to convey is that in order for us to be um, allies to, to um, immigrants and, and, and migrators is that it's important to understand and be empathetic towards the plight, to understand the nuance um, and to, in, in order, and then also to advocate for, for ways to ease some of these pains. Um, so programs, and when it comes to language barriers um, and understanding that like the way that you speak about um, immigration, the way that you speak to people that like may have a language barrier, um, yes. Uh, Aitana, am I saying it right? Please, please don't let me know. Um, the city looks like the Emerald City from Oz, a place where your, all your dreams come true. Um, and I think that you are all pulling on the city so much because this is also a very important part. Um, it is, it's sort of reflective of the American dream, which is also something, which is also the reason why um, this, this part is called the American dream and something that we also want to break down. So after you get here um, and you see all this ostracization, you're feeling um, all this separation, this anxiety, um, what is the American dream? Like how is, is this the American dream? Do you also like the American dream exists? What is it, is it subjective? What is, what are we feeling about the American dream? I need a couple of opinions. Um, I can say something. I honestly think it's fake. It's definitely not real. 
Um, and I can say it because I don't know, um, in the South side, where I'm from, where I'm from, we can always determine uh, how people stand. So we know whether we're racist or not. Um, so surprisingly, that tattoo is a spider web. Um, and that's a determinant here in the South side and how you can know someone um, is racist or not. Um, so I like coincide that with the white supremacy, you know, like where is that spider web and who is it centering and it's centering the city. Um, and the city in itself, uh, um, you can see that it's brighter, it's bigger. It's like that dream that you always want where you always want to visit, you know, but it's the, it's that dream doesn't mean it's going to come true just because like it's, if they say it's good, it doesn't always say it's going to be good. Um, so then it just goes back to the whole reality of like crossing borders, crossing the river and struggling within itself. Um, as in like you're crossing that river and like a sense of purity is coming just because like you, you're starting a whole new life. Um, and it goes into the fact that, that, yeah, the American dream isn't real because if it was, anybody could attain it. You shouldn't have to really fight for it. Um, and it's, this is a, an aspect of life that has been restraining a lot of BPI, uh, BPI excuse me, BIPOC POC individuals from actually fulfilling their dreams, whether they are from the U.S. or not. Speak it down. Okay, speak it down. That's exactly, that's exactly um, sort of like what we are conveying. And I thank you for that. Um, and it's definitely, it's true. It's all true. You got me speechless. Ugh, I'm crying. Um, Dahlia says the American dream makes it feel like any injustices you face feel like they are things that you can't complain about because you are in a dream. That's very true. That's very true. Oh, does somebody want to say something? Okay, that's very, very true. Thank you for that as well, because um, oftentimes people feel like, oh, just work harder, work harder, work harder. For what? For who? It's not working. And so something that we want to, um, and something I think that Jocelyn hit on is that like these are institutionalized things. Um, there's policy that is creating these barriers and, and, and making these barriers more extreme. Um, and while we, and it is feeling like a trap and Daisy said American dream more like American nightmare. Hello, I hear that. And um, so we see the spider web um, and something that we also like to turn to is the actual spider. Now the angle that we're at, it, it, the, the spider was already abstract to begin with, but um, you know, she's very much abstract now. So does any, can anybody recognize the spider? It's giving us leg. So it's these green, it's like a little bit of green. It starts green at the, at the bottom and it's um, black at the top and there's more um, black and it's like zigzag. Um, but this is reflective of like the trap or like the stuck. Um, <clears throat> We, we like to assert that there is nothing wrong with like, if you want to work in a factory and create things, then go ahead and do that, but it should be on your own accord. Um, and oftentimes people are stuck in, in positions. Green can represent money. And that's something that we also want to, um, we also try to convey with the mural is that um, you can look at this mural as many times as you want. You're going to pull something different out of it because um, it is all objective and subjective to your lens. Um, and you can, as long as it is tying into these very concrete factors that um, the artists and the students have chosen to convey. Um, but we understand that one thing that we want to emphasize is, is the importance of education. And so education is something that is really important. It's a critical part of, of the illusion that is American dream, but it's also a critical part of understanding who you are, where you're at, the world around us, um, and many people are liberated through their own education about themselves and their people more when we we're talking about native knowledge earlier um, about other communities so to to create solidarity and so education is a tool um, that the american dream um, idolizes but also oppresses because it creates unnecessary barriers for um, black people indigenous people and people of color to be able to achieve um, and so we want to be able to um, give people the tools to fight for a better world um, for yourself and for your community through education. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're gonna tie it back. We can tie it all the way back and put a nice little bow on it to our global citizen here. 
Um, and so when we, considering the conversation that we just had about immigration um, and tying back to what I was saying before about expanding our understanding of, of um, citizenship, it is much more than um, documentation. We have, we have uh, monarch butterflies on our wall and we use monarch butterflies as a symbol of immigration and migration um, because they fly from um, Southern Mexico all the way up to Canada every year. And if they could make these butterflies um, pay <laughs> to fly everywhere, they would, but they cannot. And so we definitely, we bring that in here because we want to um, emphasize that immigration is a natural pattern that people use to um, survive. Migration is a natural pattern just as, just because we're human doesn't mean it make any different than, than butterflies migrating because it is for survival. It is, it is a natural pattern of life. And so um, we just tie that back to the global citizen and um, understanding that the global citizen is somebody who engages with their community, is somebody who fights for their community. Um, and it's not defined by documentation because we're all citizens of the globe. Um, thank y'all so much for having us speak with you. Um, Lauren, do you have anything, anything more? No, I think, thank you so much for your time, for inviting us and for your contributions. I know that we didn't get to go through every single mural scene and there's a lot to unpack. We honestly are still figuring out what our mural means. Even 20 years later, we're always having different conversations and people see different things. Like Daisy mentioned, like does green represent money? And it very well could, right? The whole spider scene itself can represent like all the isms and the systems that exist that are horrible and trash and capitalism, y'all know. Um, so there's so much to unpack with that. And we try really hard to have these conversations, um, even not even just through the mural tours, but also through the dialogues, which I know somebody mentioned, like uh, shared the link in the chat earlier, which was really great. So we have environmental and climate justice dialogues that we're doing virtually if y'all are interested, really just like merging the intersection between environmental justice and COVID-19. Um, and we also have, I, I'm going to put the sign-in sheet in the chat, the LCC sign-in sheet, if you're interested in signing up for the Avisos. I know a few of you are already um, are, like, do receive the Avisos. Uh, that comes out, it's our weekly newsletter, comes out every Tuesday. But if you aren't signed up and you'd like to be, feel free to sign in and put your email so we can add you and you could just stay updated with what we're doing. Uh, but besides that, I don't want to take up any more of your time. But um, thank you so much for inviting us and thank you, Micaiah, for leading it. <laughs> Thank you. Hugs and kisses consensually. All right. Thank you guys so much for your time. Does anybody have any questions? All right. If it looks like there, there is no questions, thank you guys so much for your time. We really enjoyed your presentation. Um, yeah, feel free to save for the rest of the meeting or leave however you prefer. Um, and yeah. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. All right. So uh, the next order of business is um, ex officio reports. May we please have the report of the advisor? Nothing needs a report. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next order of business is officer reports. May we please have the report of the president? Uh, yeah, thanks, Daisy. Um, sorry, one sec, let me scroll. Hi, everyone, I uh, hope you all had a great weekend um, and are doing well on like midterms and stuff. Um, I don't have like a super long report, um, but essentially at the start of last week, like I got a chance to like meet with the Dean of the Honors College and the Dean of a couple of other colleges to talk about some of the stuff we had proposed, um, like the grading changes, the respondents ban, that thing studies gen ed, the GPA recalculation, the honor code, Mount Health Days. Um, and he seemed really in favor of like uh, four out of six of these proposals. Um, so specifically like respondents, I think studies, GPA recalc and um, Mount Health Days. We're gonna hear a lot more back um, this week, especially on a Wednesday. Um, about like this GPA recalculation um, and kind of like seeing where we go uh, with that. Um, we got our ethnic studies proposal reviewed um, and Representative Taylor and I are, you know, finishing creating up some supplemental materials. Um, and it looks like uh, the folks like on the Senate like need more uh, time to like interview us and speak to us. So we're gonna spend more time answering questions with them. Uh, we're meeting tomorrow with Dr. Spocheno to complete funding of the open education resources for open textbooks. 
Um, and last week we completed and submitted this 21 point mental health plan. Um, so I just wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone uh, on the Mental Health Coalition, um, especially Hannah, Michelle, Dahlia, and Quentin, who are all here. Um, and so hopefully like we can also discuss some of those uh, at USG, maybe at the next meeting or something like that, um, just so that everyone gets a chance to also see them. Um, we also got a chance to meet with uh, Dean Alice and the Diversity Inclusion Committee and uh, Bayan and uh, had an opportunity to review some of our goals um, around preventing sexual violence, um, specifically around the idea of like implementing higher community standards, pushing for the sort of deputy title line chairs um, to shorten these uh, trial periods, as well as launching like the new transformative justice position. Um, we also had a really amazing turnout at the CAN event last Wednesday. We had like uh, around 80 people show up um, and it was really um, nice to be able to have an opportunity to talk a lot about collective action um, specifically around these issues. Um, we also, um, I also finished a proposal for the crisis intervention team a few weeks back um, and I'm going to present it today in, in discussion. Uh, we had a couple of presentations like from like uh, folks like in UICPD on like use of force and incident review and so like alongside um, other folks like on like the public safety board like I'm going to be working on the sort of like CARPER style civilian oversight committee so essentially like a um, like an elected body that kind of serves as uh, this oversight organization to review these sorts of use of force incidences and um, allocate discipline as needed. Um, and then also like the last thing that I wanted to mention is like I'm also like reviewing uh, people who have been nominated for the CSSLA award program. So if you um, had a chance, like please like uh, nominate yourself or someone else. Um, but I realize now the nomination is closed. Um, but yeah, that's all. Um, does anybody have any questions? I yield the rest of my time. I have a question, Lawson. At the very end, the CSS LA program, could you elaborate what that is exactly? Yeah, um, the Student Leadership and Civic Engagement um, wing of uh, Student Affairs, like they have uh, Chancellor's uh, Student Service Leadership Award program, um, and they they do this every year, essentially, uh, where you can like nominate yourself or you can be nominated by someone else uh, for a leadership award, basically, um, for your commitment to service. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question for Wasan on why he didn't nominate all of us for that award. I'm just joking, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> But I have a, a serious question about the, the committee for reviewing incidences or incidents. Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, um, so like in the city of Chicago, there are, um, there are like two different, I guess this is like a bit of a longer story. So I'll just cut to the chase. Um, essentially the idea is to have um, an elected organization that consists of faculty, staff, students, um, who will serve to review use of force incidences that have been um, done by uh, members of UICPD, so like um, uniformed officers, um, as well as a review of complaints that might be levied, because currently the complaint process um, involves internal affairs. So essentially, the police investigates the police. Um, and so this is rather um, kind of bringing that outside and, and allowing for more transparency as well as more uh, civilian power. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? All right, thank you, Asan. The president's report will be filed. Next, we have the report of the vice president. Hi, everyone. Um, I actually wanted to start my report with something a little different today. Um, and just so we don't take up too much time, can everyone just drop like something that was exciting this weekend in the chat? Um, just to kind of keep the mood up a little. Um, I got a haircut. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, going into like the actual um, content of my report. Uh, the survey is at like 638 responses, um, which is good because our original goal is 500. Um, and actually, um, can I screen share Daisy and then I can share some of the data of the report? Yes. 
Thank you. And then someone, if I go over like three, four, like to five minutes, just say, say something and I'll stop. Um, I don't want it to go too long. But yeah, so this is some of the preliminary results that we have. Um, so this was like the important demographic information. Um, for clarity's sake, we do have a good proportion of like undergraduate and graduate students. Um, I'm kind of mixing these categories together because sometimes people don't distinguish between like professional or graduate. Um, and then the other thing is that the demographic information is pretty representative of our actual like UIC population. Um, the only thing that I wanted to fix is kind of um, essentially get more black students to be filling out the survey because our initiatives should be like informed in that way. Um, and I think it would be really helpful to have extra input um, and kind of focus on getting that. Um, and then when we asked what kind of support people needed the most right now, um, these are kind of like emotional. So anxiety, depression um, was kind of like the front runner. And then the next most are financial and academic. Um, but these three also had like pretty significant responses. Um, and this question, people could kind of pick whichever ones they felt were important. So it wasn't just to pick one. Um, and this is not a surprise to anyone, um, but most people found that it wasn't really easy to use the resources available on campus, nor did they think that, um, sorry, this should say accessibility, nor did they think that they were very accessible. Um, and so this is one of the quotes that stood out from the data is that a lot of people or some people echoed the sentiment that they didn't learn too much about like the vast number of resources at orientation. Um, the counseling center is obviously mentioned and that's kind of the first thing that people think of, but a lot of people also hear a lot of negative things about the counseling center. Um, so perhaps kind of having more information at orientation about all the different places you could go to get any kind of um, support. And then just a quick explanation of like the scales, I think detractor, so this was like a zero to 10 question. Um, detractors are, I think, zero to four. Um, passive is like four to six. And then the promoter would be like six to 10. Um, and then this was another quote that stood out um, because this is essentially what we wanted to have accomplished by the end of the semester is this idea of like a one-stop shop or some kind of like anonymous screening survey that gives you like the three resources that would be most apt to your situation. Um, so there is a need for that and there is a desire to have something of the sort. Um, and then just general awareness things. Also, I'm so Sorry, I'm not paying attention to the chat at the moment. So if people are asking questions, I'll look at that as soon as we get through this stuff. Um, so generally the counseling center and the wellness center are the most like heard of resources. And then next to that is like the cultural centers and the disability resource centers. Um, and as you kind of go further and further, the ones that are like the least are the Office of Applied Psychological Services, um, which is at BSB. But that's kind of a resource that a lot of people have found to be helpful that not too many people know about, obviously. Um, and then NPI, this one, I'm a little torn in terms of like saying that we should be like advocating about the fact that it's there uh, because they have really great wait times. And the NPI essentially takes referrals from the counseling center and then also from like the graduate programs. Um, and that's kind of who really uses NPI. Um, and then in terms of resources that were used, there was a pretty strong tie in between like not using any of them and using the counseling center. Um, and then less people kind of use some of these other ones that have typically higher like levels of like um, higher promoter scores, basically. Um, and then in terms of like students evaluating these resources, um, this is, I just picked five of them that I thought were the most apparent. 
Um, so the Disability Resource Center typically has a very good response. Um, the Wellness Center is kind of evenly split across the board. NPI, I'm assuming a lot of it is passive because um, either people like weren't able to get an appointment there or in general hadn't heard of it. Um, and then Office of Applied Psychological Services, you can tell by the fact that there were only four responses that only four people had actually um, used them. And then there's like no detractor score. So no one's had a bad um, experience with them. But that's something that I think we could definitely learn more about and definitely speak more about. Um, and then the Counseling Center, again, this doesn't, shouldn't surprise anyone, um, but an overall negative sentiment um, but yeah. And then this is in terms of like faculty, staff, and TAs. Um, in general, most people seem to think that none of the three categories are very um, understanding of mental health needs. Um, I personally had an experience this week where a family member passed away and I was asked for like documentation, but like a screenshot of a message that explained the circumstances of their passing wasn't enough. Um, and I'm not gonna go burden my family to kind of give a death certificate. And so I would rather kind of like take the burden of the grade as opposed to kind of burdening my family with something like that. But in general, um, I think the way that we want to address this is to have more like empathy trainings and more like mental health first aid trainings that are far more encouraged amongst people that are kind of like in teaching roles or are in um, administrative roles. Um, and then this I wanted to highlight because of the people that said they reached out to someone other, other than the Counseling Center, about half of them said that if they weren't relying on the Counseling Center, they were relying on other students. Um, and this is one of the biggest things in terms of like mental health resources is that students relying on students ends up kind of making the problem even bigger um, because students, if they're unable to provide the care that their peers need, oftentimes will um, kind of develop mental health issues of their own. Um, and so it kind of creates like a domino effect. And so it's really important that the professional resources are well, um, like well off and adequate in kind of helping students otherwise it continually cycles. Um, and then these were the barriers that people identified. So having your schedule, um, your schedule not being open enough to access some of these resources. And then the second made like most major one was the fact that they were unsure of which resource to use. Um, and then of course, transportation and how far they are from campus. Um, like SSB is really far from both East and West campus. Um, and so that's definitely hard to use. Um, yeah, and then long wait times, costs, stigma, and like just general lack of appropriate resources. And then these were some of the questions that we asked in terms of initiatives that we had. Um, this, um, and then this right graph shows you overall number like relative to each other. Um, so definitely like text messaging is something that we should kind of push for like a little bit more anonymous than a phone call. Um, and then also like professional individual support, which would be like one on one counseling. Um, and then this is one that I didn't necessarily anticipate this reaction, but it is there. Um, so if our university was able to partner with like Headspace or Calm and offer that as um, a resource for students to use, kind of would you use it? Um, most people said no, but the more I kind of looked into it, there is a screening tool that UIC spends a decent sum of money on that I think would be far less helpful and is very much, if you look at it, it's, it's not helpful whatsoever. It's kind of just like, oh yeah, you've identified the fact that you have anxiety, okay. <laughs> and there's no like correlation to what you should do afterwards or who you should reach out to. Um, and so I personally think that money spent there would be far better in offering some kind of um, like app-based service that's more preventative. Um, but that's 
a topic for discussion. Um, a lot of people do enjoy online platforms in terms of like Zoom or like having sessions over Zoom as opposed to like in person. That's a 50-50 split. Um, and that's kind of like, um, or the way that this question was asked and it would probably require further clarification is essentially like post pandemic, would you still want to have like video software um, being used? And then how helpful would it be to have licensed staff available for 24 seven crisis counseling? Um, and this is something that Lawson has in the items for discussion, but this was like a huge resounding response of like, yes, that would be very helpful. Um, and then this is in regards to campus care. So covering online mental health resources and then also covering off campus mental health resources. Um, so basically advocating for an expansion of campus care. Um, and again, overall yeses for that. Um, and then this is just like another quote from the short answers. Um, campus care kind of not being adequate. Um, and not taking care of the people. And essentially people aren't able to reach the offices that they need to, or um, the, like, yeah, they just aren't able to reach the offices that they need to and aren't able to get appointments. Um, and then this was just like an interesting way to break down the data, but this is specifically how well did the counseling center address your needs? Um, and I broke it down by race. So basically of everyone that identified as Asian, 57% of that population said that they had an overall negative experience. Um, and I was intrigued to kind of look at this. And so there's an equal amount of people that basically said that it was negative or kind of were just in the middle about it. Um, but yeah, overall in general, most people have a more negative um, idea. Um, and then this is something to be addressed in later years, but basically returning to in person instruction and making sure that we have everything in place that we need to, um, in order to really transition back into in person. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, can we screen share back to the reports, please? Thank you. Um, yeah, so those were the overall results. Um, I do ask that that stuff kind of remain within our group um, because we didn't have IRB approval for the survey itself. So we're not allowed to publish it, but we're allowed to use it to inform um, like the initiatives that we have um, and the advocacy things that we do. Um, and then as Lawson mentioned, we have that document of like 21 different recommendations for the university. And hopefully tomorrow at the meeting with Dean Deanna, there will be good follow up on that with um, next steps. Um, and then the DRC meeting is going to be this week. And like I said, that task force meeting with Dean Deanna. Um, in regards to the menstrual hygiene initiatives, um, essentially we need to overcome a couple of hurdles before we can agree and buy them even other than just budget concerns. Um, so we need to basically contact facilities, identify a point person, and also if there needs to be any testing before installation, because they would be kind of like drilled into the wall. Um, and so this is the quote from the company that we were talking to. Um, it was, it would be essentially 20,000 for this year. Um, and that's for both the the dispensers and like the filling of all the products. Um, and then kind of every year thereafter, just to keep up with that inventory, it would be 15,000. Um, yeah, and then for bonfire liaison, there is a resolution to be presented regarding that. Um, and we'll see if any changes need to be made to that. But yes, that is it for me. Any questions? Uh, I have a quick question about um, the menstrual hygiene vending machines. Mm -hmm. um, do they, do the products expire um, by any chance? Um, 
That is a good question that I don't know off the top of my head. I would assume not because they're like biodegradable and also fully cotton. Um, so I, I don't think so, but I can definitely check, um, check on that for you. Yeah, well, I was just saying, um, cause if we're filling it completely for the year, if we don't know when people are gonna be camp on campus again, I would say maybe, um, we could maybe consider filling it halfway and seeing like how quickly the products um, like are used until we're like all on campus again, um, just to like save money and I think product in general, but just something to consider. Yeah, that, that's really fair. Um, any other questions? Thank you. Um, yeah, that is it for me then. Oh uh, yeah, I could, couldn't hear you by the way, Daisy, but thank you. Um, so I'm gonna be presenting the resolution for the UIC library again, and um, it'll be voted on today. Um, I'm still working on the logistics on how to transfer um, the $10,000 in funding to support the UIC Open Textbook Faculty Incentive Program that we passed last week. Um, the USG has never actually done anything like this before, so I'm kind of figuring out with the Dean of Students Office on um, like how to work it out and stuff like that. Um, the Treasury Committee met with the UIC Chess Club to discuss the merchandise club. Um, USG's brand will be promoted on the merchandise and I'll be presenting that resolution today. Uh, the Treasury Committee will be meeting with the Sustainability Department on February 26th. Uh, so anyone that's interested in like the environment or wants to join that meeting can feel free to join that meeting. Um, just email me or send me a message. Um, and we might have a possible collaboration with the Pre-Health Mentor Network um, to host a Climate for Health Ambassador. It's kind of still in the works. Uh, I haven't met with them yet. Um, so I'll get the details for that once I meet them. And we're still working with LAF at UIC to figure out the logistics on how to pay the, the guest speaker that they're having that's abroad. Um, I still have yet to receive like uh, concrete information on how to pay the speaker. Um, so I'll be reaching out to them continuously. Um, and then I reached out to the Wellness Center as well to see how USG can help with their mental workshops. Um, so I did see like that they were having workshops with different orgs. So I wanted to see if USG could help with that and whether like it be funding or just promoting their workshops on the social media. Um, and the Treasury Committee is going to continue to reach out to different orgs to help the undergraduate students. I yield the rest of my time for questions. Daisy, it's still staticky. Are there any questions? No. Okay, we're gonna take a one minute pause. Everyone just please hold. Okay, great. Can we have the uh, report of the speaker? Oh, that's me. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so this week, Daisy met with Matthew and they discussed USG Matters. Uh, they created a guide for the handbooks and they worked on the leadership summit, which will be uh, tomorrow. I hope you all can make it um, at seven to 8.30. Um, so it is mandatory, but those who are unable to make it will be required to set up an individual meeting. All representatives will meet with Daisy and all the cabinet members will meet with Matthew. Um, so the next thing is uh, this week, Daisy worked on the bidet initiative and she met with Anshu last week, but they hit a wall because they were unsure who to contact in order to get started. Um, and this week she will be meeting with the diversity and inclusion committee as well as the Campus Life Committee. 
Um, Michelle and Daisy plan to meet, to plan to attend Bion's committee meeting next week to get things started. Um, she also has received feedback to work with Hannah and will be reaching out. Uh, Danny and I are, Danny and Daisy are now taking attendance for committee meetings. Um, representatives, please make sure you work with your chair to ensure you don't miss any crucial information. If you know you will miss a meeting, inform your chairperson beforehand. And as a reminder, committee meeting absences also count towards the total amount of absences you're allowed per semester. Um, chairpersons, please make sure you record your committee meeting attendance in the document that Daisy emailed you last week. And all new representatives, um, your committee preference form has been sent out. So please make sure you fill it by the deadline. Uh, Daisy and I met and we are learning how to make meeting packets. And I will chair, I'm now making my own packet soon and I will be um, chairing a meeting in the next few weeks. Are there any questions? Let's see if Daisy's mic is working. Hello. Great, fantastic. Is it? Oh, thank God, okay. Um, well, thank you so much for doing this. Good job, you did awesome. Um, did you finish the report? Yes, unless- okay. And there was just this one more thing that I did not put in my report, and that is the new representatives were put into committees. Um, so just give me one second to pull it up and I will tell you what the decision was. Um, let's see. I'm sorry, guys, give me one second. So, um, yes, me, while I try to look this up, the Leadership Summit is basically an event that Matthew and I will be doing. And it is basically, we'll be doing a refresher course of the, um, you know, things that you need to know in, U in USG, like Robert's rules, constitution, bylaws, attendance policies, resolutions. It's just gonna be a very quick uh, refresher. Matthew will also be doing, um, his part of the presentation will be about leadership and leadership skills. Um, and then we'll also have some fun activities to go with that as well. Matthew, did you want to add anything about the Leadership Summit? Yeah, you know, I think that covers everything that um, the event will be for tomorrow. Okay, uh, all right. And then for the committee placements, um, I know I sent some of you the email and the committee placements have changed. Um, so for the diversity and inclusion committee, Dania will be placed into that committee. Um, Zaid will be placed into campus life. Arthur will be placed into student affairs. And then Nora will be placed into legislative affairs. All right, any questions about anything, the entire report? I have a question, Daisy. Um, may maybe I missed it in the last meeting, but what is the bidet initiative that you were working on? Yeah, so that's basically, um, we kind of thought about, um, we wanted to be more inclusive and we know that there are some groups of students that need the bidets for religious reasons and also just for hygiene reasons. Uh, most of the world uses bidets, um, the, uh, the, most of the world, yeah, most of the world uses it. And then the US doesn't really use it. Um, so we're kind of behind in that in that sense. Um, and UIC is a very diverse place. So we wanted to make sure that everybody from anywhere in the world can feel welcome uh, and can feel like they can go on about their days, about their day and, you know, do what they need to do for religious reasons. Um, so that's why I'll be working with the diversity and inclusion committee. And then also I'll be working with the campus life committee to try and bring uh, bidets on campus to some of the main buildings. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much the summary of it. Does that make sense? 
Okay. Any other questions? Something really quick that just came to mind. Um, is there going to be priority for where the bidets are placed, like in the dorms versus like in the lecture centers? Um, we thought more so the um, uh, the number one that popped up that everybody who suggested where to put it said was Student Center East. Um, we also talked about putting it in the library and then maybe in DSB. Um, it depends on the funding. Um, we we have I know I talked to Anshu and he said that we could probably use up to ten thousand dollars if somebody else covers some portion of it. Uh, well, that would be preferable. And we're just gonna have to see if we're gonna do just the bidet attachment or if we're gonna have to get entirely new toilets. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Yep, any other questions? For the stalls with the bidet, will you be putting a sign so that students who come in won't get confused? I, the way I see it, yes, there will be. Gotcha. Other questions? If you guys are interested in working with us on the bidet initiative, it's, uh, I, I'm personally, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not very good at initiatives. I work within USG, not really outside. So I'm not, I don't know how this is gonna go for me. Um, that's why I'm, I'm hoping to get some help from the committee chairs. Um, and yeah, if you wanna be a part of it, let me know. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, then the speaker's report will be filed. Uh, next, we have the report of the Chief of Staff. Um, so yeah, I can't believe it's already like midterms uh, week. So um, the quote I found for today was, vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision just passes time. Vision with action can change the world. And that's from, uh, person named Joel A. Barker. I believe he is an author. So uh, last week, I met with Daisy to plan the leadership summit and create an outline for the USG officer handbooks. Um, I plan to, uh, you know, drafting these handbooks with each uh, officer uh, in our one-on-one -on -one meetings these upcoming uh, weeks. Um, the textbook affordability campaign had two successful action blocks last week to spread the double pal petition you know, Illinois is still in the lead for student leader sign-ons. It's great that student leaders here at UIC are very into, uh, you know, being active, uh, being engaged in, uh, on campus. And I met with Kayla and Michelle on, uh, to plan how we can establish a relationship and connection with UIC sports teams. We met like last Friday. And uh, we're gonna talk more about that on uh, items for discussion. And I joined the treasury committee uh, with the UIC chess club to ask for funds for uh, club merchandise. And then I met with Anshu over the weekend to create the resolution. And like last Tuesday, I believe um, I did Instagram to uh, promote uh, student involvement. So uh, things I'm working on right now is, you know, doing, I'm, um, I'm doing a workshop actually tomorrow on uh, Microsoft Word I'm just gonna like teach how you can like use it like some maybe some advanced features that you didn't know were on there. If you're interested in that, you can um, find the link on uh, the L uh, the website for uh, LES. Um, I'm meeting with Dr. Swacheno with Wasan. Um, Dr. Swacheno is the head librarian of the OER program. We're just gonna discuss how USG can uh, help and collaborate with her and. Um, discuss how the funds USG will provide to her will be used. Um, I'm also looking into how we can get access to a list service that USG can communicate with the whole student body. And our open education week is next week. And um, so we at Illinois PERG are planning a lot of events and action blocks for this week. Um, it's, it's our big week, um, we're getting the national report for uh, higher education is being released this week and we're planning uh, action blocks around that. So everything we've gathered from the survey last semester, if you remember, I was spreading that. And not just uh, here in Illinois, but nationally, we'll see uh, what they've found. 
and uh, not much has changed. The last report was actually like seven years ago and seven years later, um, not much has changed. In fact, things have gone worse. So if you like to volunteer and help out, um, please contact me at um, my email. Um, additionally, uh, I, re I received an email from uh, UIC. It says that you know you need to change your password. So like, if you haven't done that already, uh, I think you have to change your password, or otherwise your account will be uh, deactivated. And uh, in addition to that, uh, I'm doing a lobby day with Illinois Perg uh, this Thursday, and so like we're going to be talking to representatives or um, their higher education staff member. And so I'm, I'm looking for uh, some good stories in regard to financial aid. So if uh, you yourself have a um, story that you would like to share, um, or you have a friend that's you know, struck with uh, paying for college, you know, please let me know. And, um, because um, they would like to hear stories, not just from myself, but like from people around me. So it'd be great to uh, strengthen that with uh, the the hard facts we're presenting to these uh, U.S. representatives. And that's uh, all for my report. I yield for questions. So, you know, I, I, I got an email. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone's got it, but I'm just letting everyone know that they should probably change their password uh, just in case because uh, the deadline's this Saturday and of if you don't change it, they'll, they'll deactivate your account for some reason. Just a comment about that. It's different for everybody. Um, so the deactivation this weekend is just for you, Matthew. Um, I know, for example, mine is like in November. So just whenever you get the email, you know, make sure you're keeping eye on it. Um, are there any questions or comments? Um, I just want to ask Matthew to keep me updated on the listserv initiative and uh, like whoever you meet with to talk to them about it. Just ask them if we can uh, publish our newsletter through the listserv so that it like uh, reaches everybody. Yeah, for sure. I'll um, write that down. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments or questions? All right, if no questions, then the report of the Chief of Staff will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee Chair. Hello, everyone. Um, actually, I have a quick comment. You know how like Hannah started her report differently and like asked us all to say something exciting we, we did this week? I literally couldn't even think of one thing. It's very so sad, and that's something I need to work on. But as for my report, I met with, well, it wasn't that I met with Dr. Ellis to talk about Title IX initiatives and we are trying to schedule a meeting with the Title IX coordinator. Um, we are working on the Title IX resolution. I am working on the Title IX resolution and uh, I'll be reviewing it with Wasson before we send it to, before we send it to uh, the Campus Advocacy Network and the GEO to review it for us, like language and all that. As Watson mentioned in his report, the Shake It Up uh, CAN event had a great, great turnout. Over 80 participants were in that meeting. And uh, obviously it facilitated a lot of uh, good conversation around the gender-based violence uh, issue and how it's being held, handled at UIC and uh, ways to, um, you know, take action after that meeting and not just uh, leave the conversation at the meeting. So um, one, th one thing I learned from the meeting I wanted to share with you guys is to carry on the conversations you have uh, at those, like, uh, uh, at those uh, meetings or not meetings, but like events. And uh, like some of us can't really attend all of these events. So if you could like spread the message, spread awareness about it to your friends, even if it's just one friend, that's you taking action. And that uh, this is a slow progress, but it is indeed impactful. And that is advocacy 
and that advocacy is important regardless of the kind of power you have, especially on campus since we're all like students. And literally like the strongest kind of power we have is um, us advocating for students, right? For other students. And I wanted to thank specifically our representatives because they, me as a representative, I didn't think I was making this uh, like huge impact at UAC, right? But I think as a representative, your role is really important and you really help us take care of the small details that we need to manage so that we can focus on other things. So I thank you for that. And I thank you for attending the meetings. Of, I see the attendance has been going very well, regardless of the strict attendance policy. I, uh, I still want to thank you. And another thing is I contacted the vice provost for, not the vice provost, but Tanya. So she's uh, the assistant, I think, vice provost for uh, inclusion from the diversity office. And uh, she will be leading our minority students' rights event. And um, our cultural centers will also be speaking at that event. So far, a couple of cultural centers confirmed. I'm still waiting on, on some of them. And uh, I want to thank Nina for the flyer. We will be relieving it today on the USG social media. And uh, we're having the meeting with Tanya on Wednesday. So if there's anything you want to. OK, so if there's anything you want, sorry, I was checking the chat. So if there's anything you want to discuss with the Office of Diversity, you can join our meeting. I think it's at 2 p.m. And uh, the event, we want to have it March 11 at 5 p.m. So we will appreciate you attending. Uh, I contacted the Hindu Student Council for and the Cornerstone crew at UIC for interfaith conversation hour. Hindu Student Council confirmed they will be joining. So we're just waiting on crew and we'll have the event uh, March 16 or 18, depending on the group's uh, you know, vote. And um, I'm, I was working on the Be Aware infographics. We have our first uh, organization featured on the Instagram page. So check it out, share it with people, uh, spread awareness and uh, attend. Yeah, so the Arab American Culture Center Town Hall uh, for their MENA initiative will be on March 5th. We will be, I will be attending it representing USG. And uh, we will be contacting professors to inform them about the Latino Culture Center initiative, the dialogue and the mural tour that you saw today. They are hoping to present to uh, classes and facilitate conversation on uh, the climate, climate change and uh, how it's, uh, like how it's affected by COVID-19. And, uh, oh, the counseling center, right. So this is what I wanted to talk to uh, specifically Dahlia and, uh, you know, the, and Hannah, the Mental Health Coalition. So the counseling center wants to launch this new initiative uh, to raise awareness about mental health and just like uh, the stigma around uh, speaking to therapists uh, they want to create a podcast for students and feature students on it and just talk about like various issues, right? So we're having the meeting tomorrow at 9 a.m. If you guys would like to join, I don't know if if you uh, want to share your findings with them from the survey, but feel free to join and feel free to, uh, you know, voice your concerns. The meeting will be with uh, a student. I don't know if it's a student, but it's an intern. It's not, it's not one of the psychologists, it's an intern. Uh, and what committee? What about talking to your committee? Okay. And I attended the cabinet members meeting with our advisors, that was on Friday. And I want to, oh, and I connected the Office of Planning Sustainability and Project Management with Michelle, so that they work on the carpooling initiative together. Michelle, whenever she has updates, she will update us. And uh, lastly, I want to gladly and like, I'm very, very happy to announce that the newsletter will be moving to campus groups. This is a resource that I, no one was aware of. And uh, we actually get to send out like newsletters by email. I don't have to create Canva, PDFs anymore. I don't have to create a Google Drive with all the pictures on, can on the Canva PDF anymore. I could just directly put 
everything into one email. So I'm very, very happy about this and Kayla's job will be a lot easier from now on. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so because I mentioned that I didn't find anything exciting uh, during my week. So Kayla is mentioning that meeting with my committee is the exciting thing that I should be uh, grateful for. And indeed, I am very grateful for my committee. Uh, thank you guys. And I yield for questions. I'm sorry it was so long. Are there any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then the report of the chairwoman of the diversity and inclusion committee will be filed. Next, we have the report of the uh, legislative affairs committee chair. Hello, hope everybody's doing well um, and has, I sort of like ban when Hannah asked, I was like, did I have a weekend? But, you know, hopefully that gets better. Um, I hope everybody is doing okay with midterms. Um, it is also, I think, the last week of February. So it is also the last week of um, the Black History Month. So if there are any events that you guys are looking into, definitely share those in chat so we can all kind of um, are able to go to those events if we weren't able to previously and within the semester. Uh, as for my report, it's pretty short this week. Um, there wasn't a lot of um, movement, more so just kind of planning for initiatives that are taking a while. Um, in regards to the sexual assault action items, um, I'm meeting with Title IX with my committee on Wednesday at four o'clock, I believe. Um, this is gonna be a follow-up to the meeting we had previously. Um, just working more so on that letter that they sent to us and hopefully getting some figuring out where we stand how much we can do or how much we can't do with that um in regards and then my next thing is ongoing discussions with the honors college about collaboration um i talked to nikki who is the head of the um student leadership and civic engagement um and also somebody who is on the co-chair of the diversity committee of the honors college. So, sorry, did I cut out? Okay, awesome. My like um, picture is frozen on the side where it shows me. So I was like, hmm, that's an issue. But um, anyways, uh, we're talking about kind of looping the book clubs that they both have um, together at the end of the semester. Wait, let me, better? Okay, awesome. <laughs> but um, so we're hopefully tying in the book clubs that they both have into a SAC, so student advisory committee and student gov event about like lobbying, about activism while you're being a student um, because I feel like sometimes a lot of um, students feel like they can't both be active or an activist and also um, a student because they feel like activism is like a full-time job, but you can definitely do both. So we hope to have that conversation um, as like an event or a panel that's still in discussion. So there will be more information about that later. Um, in regards to the Mental Health Coalition, uh, we mostly did da data analysis last week. We have our last, meeting with Indiana, um, which Hannah has talked about already. Um, and I think we're just kind of working on second steps now. And then we'll have more information after this meeting with Indiana, just because to figure out what we need to be doing, um, what that last meeting kind of finalizes for us, though it's not very hopeful that anything will be finalized. So we'll see there. Um, and then in regards to, I guess, second steps, the only tangible thing that I can think of right now that's gonna be happening within the next week for me specifically is um, talking to one of my professors about IRB and IRB approval. Um, as Hannah stated previously, you can't really share um, these results as much just because we don't have IRB approval and IRB approval is needed for 
anything that really involves the university and um, research and like its students. So we're hoping that we don't need that, but that I guess we can figure out after I meet with my professor. Um, and then after that, we're, I met with Matthew earlier today, um, just for a quick chief of staff meeting. And then next week we will also be meeting to discuss more so the packets um, or the handbook, not packets, but yeah. Um, in regards to my committee meeting, it was really quick. It was a quick debrief of everything that I kind of have stated um, already. We will be meeting all of us on Wednesday. And then because it is midterms, we may decide not to have a meeting this week, um, just so people can kind of focus more so on schoolwork. Um, but if the meeting Wednesday, it feels like at the end of that, we need to have more conversation. Um, on that, we will have a meeting. Uh, but if not, we will probably just not have a meeting this week for people to focus on midterms and then as resume resume. I don't know why that word was so hard for me, but resume meetings uh, week nine. Is it week seven? Yeah, it's week seven. Anyways, um, all right, yeah, I yield for questions. Are there any questions? Um, Daisy, just really quick. Uh, I have to head out at eight, which is 8.02. Um, and I had like a really quick announcement. Would I be able to say that? Go right now? Okay, Go awesome. Um, so I previously met with a rep representative from the Halo on campus um, to, and she wanted, was reaching out to a bunch of different student leaders um, to be interviewed or interview them about student involvement and what it takes to be involved um, on campus at UIC specifically. If that's something that interests you, um, please let me know and I can kind of send your information over to her so she can kind of contact you and you guys can set up a meeting if being interviewed is something you'd be interested in. Um, it's kind of just like, gauging your interest of being on campus and like how any difficulties, any like leadership qualities that you think are important, stuff like that. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Any questions real quick? All right, if no questions, then the report of the chairwoman of the Legislative Affairs Committee will be filed. Um, next, we have the report of the Public Relations Committee Chair. Everyone and good evening. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, I did not get a lot of things done this weekend because um, because of a family situation. So my brother got really sick and we had to rush him to the hospital. And I think I'm, I'm catching his fever. So I'm getting prepared for that. And I'm gonna go tell my deputy chair to prepare for me getting sick this week. All right, uh, moving on. So I've uploaded meeting number four on YouTube. Um, I canceled the PRC meeting on Friday because because of family situations. And then I didn't get the chance to attend the board meeting because uh, because I had class during that time. So I will reschedule with advisor Parker and hopefully he can catch me up with everything. Um, what's in progress is that um, our initiative of sharing what USG has been doing on Instagram. I've created a template and then I'm gonna go talk to one of my committee members so that they can head on that project and just you know use the template over and over again as the weeks progress. As for um, another initiative that I'm taking on is that I'm I'm designing a locker design for on shoes locker initiative. Um, as for another initiative is that I am trying to work on the, my committee and I are trying to work on the website, uploading documents and trying to uh, restructure it to make it more inviting and more appealing. So that's a, a work in progress. And finally, the promotional items initiative. Today will be the first read of the resolution. I'll read it later. And I'm really excited. And um, please make sure, please um, understand that whatever I've written there, we can always change the numbers to whatever, to whatever pleases our, our group. Yeah, cool. So if you have any questions, let me know. I yield my time. Any questions? All right. 
If there are no questions, then the report of the chairwoman of the Public Relations Committee will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Student Affairs Committee Chair. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well and your week has been good so far. So we had a committee meeting on Friday and during this meeting we brainstormed some ideas to ease the transition from online learning to in-person learning. But most of the conversation entailed problems that might affect this transition. So the first one was with international students who might not be able to return. If you're not aware, there's some travel restrictions. So people in China, the Schengen area, the Republic of Ireland, Iran, Brazil, the UK and South Africa currently cannot come into the United States. There are some um, exceptions, but I don't know if these are going to, you know, you know, apply to everyone. Another issue was social distancing in classes and how would this be possible in smaller rooms? Dr. Fauci did state that um, social distancing guidelines would need to be in place to at least 2022. Um, another issue we addressed was, we talked about was attendance issue. How would we address a potential drop in in-class attendance? Because um, attending um, on Zoom and commuting to school are completely different. And we would have to double down on academic support resources as students mitigate the change from online back to in-person classes. Representative Arando Ortiz is working with the Office of Equity to ensure that appropriate disciplinary actions for students reported to be prejudiced or discriminated put in place. And these disciplinary actions won't be necessarily super harsh, but would really be there to educate the students of the impact of their behavior. And the record for students who were reported for this kind of behavior should be kept. She's also working with the head of undocumented students to caution the student body against racist behavior. And she's working with Senator Villanueva to secure funding for promoting equitable practices across campuses in Illinois. I met with Michelle and shared some resources to assist in the plastic free effort and cautioning campus dining to reduce their plastic waste. If you're not aware, UIC strives to be a zero waste campus by 2050. I implore you all to check out the UIC sustainability websites to educate yourself about how to help UIC achieve this goal and adjust your own personal habits. Um, so something that we talked about to be accomplished is asking professors to turn on the um, closed captioning and live transcripts for classes. I know the host of the meeting can just literally click on the CC um, option and it essentially dictates what the professor is saying. And this is a great disability resource and also helps with language barriers. It's very easy to use. I use it in my committee's meeting on Friday and beyond being this um, disability and language barrier resource. Some students find it easier to read than to listen. It's one of the many advantages of online learning that can be taken advantage of. And something else that talk, we were talking about is um, a get vaccinated campaign. And I put procedure caution because I know it's, it's some people are like, it's some, for some people it's, it's getting the vaccine is a very sensitive topic. But if we do go ahead, it would have to be an effort between the um, various USG committees and on-campus organizations. And the whole point it would be to educate about the vaccine details such as efficacy, um, side effects, importance of getting both vaccine jabs and so on. And it would also to um, it would also be to educate people about who is eligible in each phase and emphasize the dates. So phase one might start in March, phase two in May. And this is important because some people don't realize they're eligible to be vaccinated. I got my vaccine last Tuesday. I, I, I encourage everyone to check if you're eligible for the vaccine now. And something we need to take into consideration is um, culture and ethnicity generally affect opinions with the vaccine. If you're not aware, Pfizer has been slapped with a bunch of lawsuits for um, illegally testing on children in some African countries, specifically Nigeria. And another thing we thought about, is it appropriate for us to encourage students to get vaccinated? But I assume as a, as a university and hospital school, it is part of a responsibility to encourage students to get the vaccine. And I guess for this campaign, it should be an online format, perhaps outside the vaccination centers at the College of Pharmacy in the Credit Union One place. We can get give like I got vaccinated badges, ice lollies, sweets, post vaccination. And then the GPA recalculation letter, um, it was included in the um, meeting packet. So hopefully you got a chance to read it, but it's all it's also like an item for discussion. We're gonna go into details about that later. And for the first year expansion seminar that I was talking about last week, I'm really at a standstill because I need enough feedback from academic advisors in the various colleges to know if it's a project worth exploring. And I'm looking for feedback that's not just affirmative. So far it's like, oh great, I wouldn't love this, but I'm really looking for like, um, the, I want to be able to note down obstacles that might affect the plans for this. 
But yes, that's my report. I hope you lot have a splendid week ahead and I yield for questions and comments. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you for mentioning the uh, live transcript. I did not know I could do that, but it's yes. turned on now. So I hope it's an amazing you feature. Yeah. Enjoy that <laughs> if you need it. Um, all right. Uh, well, if there are no questions, then I have a, the I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Uh, is the closed captioning, um, is that available on, on Blackboard too? Like Black Blackboard Collab? I'm not sure because, you know, we obviously don't host um, classes on Blackboard Collaborate. So I'd have to ask the professor, like, can you turn it on? But if they could, that would be amazing. Any other questions? Okay. If there are no questions, uh, then the report of the Chairwoman of the Student Affairs Committee will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Campus Life Committee Chair. Hello everyone, I hope you had a great week. I'll try to keep this brief because we're already a little over time. Um, so our committee meeting has changed from Tuesday 6.15 to 7.15 to Thursday 4 to 5. Um, so please be aware of that if you're planning to drop in to talk about something. Um, as Tega mentioned, I had a meeting with her um, to discuss the Office of Sustainability um, and the zero waste initiatives that we planned. Um, thank you Tega for so many pre presenting me with so many um, amazing resources. I'm very grateful. Um, so what I plan on doing next is to meet with the Office of Sustainability and the dining hall to kind of discuss um, what we can do to mitigate the plastic waste produced by the, the dining hall um, and to conduct a short survey of students that use dining halls to gauge their opinion on how much waste is being generated just to have something to present. Um, I also had a meeting with Kayla and Matthew to discuss the sports teams initiative. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to boost student engagement and morale. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that during um, items for discussion. So we can talk about that then. Um, and another initiative that I plan on working on is the Dining Hall Inclusivity Initiative. I talk a little bit with um, Bayon about this. Um, we kind of touched on it last semester, but we didn't really get follow up from the dining halls. So um, I wanted to have a meeting with them to discuss um, the options that they were providing for students with dietary restrictions um, and if and to find out a little more about how they were accommodating students who made it who may need to fast for religious reasons um, so I've actually really received a bunch of complaints about this um, from students in the past so I think it would be great to get some clarity on their practices with this um, and if needed I would also like to conduct a survey um, to get to gauge student opinion on this as well, um, just to have um, something to go off of during those meetings. Um, that's it for my report. I yield for questions. Are there any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then the report of the chairwoman of the campus life committee will be filed. Next, um, or the next order of business is, um, sorry, one second, uh, old business. Yep, okay. So first we have resolution 2021-S4-802. Um, Anshu, would you like to present this? Yeah, um, the charging locker collaboration resolution. Um, I'm the chief sponsor and co-sponsors are Mohammed, Matt, and Megan. Uh, so whereas the UIC library is a hub for learning in which many students use the library as a place to study, learn, research, and focus, and whereas the UIC library is putting $4,000 towards the purchase of a 10-bay charging locker, which will be placed in the idea commons for students to charge their devices while simultaneously keeping them secure, and whereas in exchange for USG's financial support, the charging locker will be USG-themed which further creates an impression to the student body of USG's commitment to serving the students on campus. The let it be resolved that USG will contribute $2,000 towards the $6,000 total cost of the Kiwi Boost 10 Bay charging locker, which will be placed in the idea commons of the UIC library. All right, um, does anybody have any comments or questions regarding this resolution? 
as a heads up, we will be voting on this tonight. Any comments, questions? I have a question. So when will these uh, lockers be uh, placed in the, in the library? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so we're aiming before campus opens up. Um, so before like next fall, uh, sometime by then. Any other comments or questions? Any amendments? Um, is there a way, I guess this is pretty like not really viable, but is there a way that like we, the lockers notify students when a device has charged or something so that you know a student doesn't have their computer or something in there for like five or six hours on end and other students need to use it too yeah that's a good question um i don't actually know if that's like a built-in feature or if that can be like added on uh, separately um, but like i think that's a good idea and definitely something we could discuss with the library I don't think that'll be an issue um, because I don't know that many people who can last six hours without their phone. <laughs> um, any other comments or questions? Anything before we move on to voting? All right, so we can move on to voting. Uh, all those in favor of passing resolution 2021-S4-802, please say aye. 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 All that opposed, please say nay. Does anybody abstain? All right, the ayes have it. This resolution has passed. Um, next, the next order of business is new business. So first we have resolution 2021-S5-1000. Um, Hannah, would you like to present this? Yeah. Um, okay, so this is the Bonfire Liaison Resolution. Um, chief sponsor is myself. Whereas the undergraduate student government recognizes Bonfire as an independent news source for UIC students and associates, Whereas the USG body this year has focused heavily on increasing the presence and understanding of our body towards the general population. Whereas the body recognizes the strength in forging a relationship between the two organizations, then let it be resolved that the USG handbook will include a position titled Bonfire Liaison, who is responsible for sharing information regarding progress on the resolutions and initiatives with the writers of Bonfire and can assist in writing themselves. Um, let it be further resolved that a representative will identify their interest in holding this position when applying to be a representative and nominations for this position will begin after all representatives join the body for that semester. Um, let it be further resolved that the nominated representatives will then apply to Bonfire through their formal recruitment process and be accepted in order to fulfill the role. Questions? Uh, all right. I would like to open up the floor for discussion. Does anybody have any comments, questions, concerns, anything? Uh, questions. Um, so the liaison won't be specifically writing, correct? Like they'll just, again, just pretty much be a liaison or will they have an actual, like more of a role in Bonfire? Um, it's totally dependent on whoever that is. So if they want to be writing, they're more than welcome, but it does not have to be. I had a question. So would the liaison be like an e-board member and have like reports or would they just kind of like be in it, their own subcommittee kind of thing? Uh, for discussion, um, if you guys think that's something that we need to clarify, does anyone have a strong opinion one way or the other? Uh, I don't necessarily know if they would need to have reports because they would essentially be reporting on our progress, which we already kind of know about. That's just my opinion. I think that's fair. I think in terms of like whatever committee that they're a part of, um, 
if they do have something re to report for that week, maybe request from the chair of their committee, like a couple minutes to present that week. I think that would be okay. Any other comments, questions, concerns, amendments? I have a question or more like a clarification uh, for Hanna. Um, so when a new representative will come into USG and if they're interested in this bonfire liaison position, will bonfire already know that USG would be interested in collaborating with bonfire as a USG representative? Yeah, so I've spoken to them about this already. Um, in fact, I sent the resolution over um, so that they could read over it as well. Um, so yeah, they already know to anticipate um, that someone would be interested in doing this. I guess the other question that I have for all of you is, do we necessarily have to limit this to one person? Um, would it be easier to kind of have maybe whoever's interested, maybe have like a couple of people? I also like just for this, like uh, to answer that question, like I err on the side of like having one person um, just because then you don't have like this issue where it's like you have three people and everyone thinks it's the other person's responsibility to have done the work for this week. Um, it just saves you a lot of time uh, when you have to deal with like less, I guess, like internal bureaucracy in that sense. Yeah, that's fair. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Um, I kind of have a question, Sarah. I'm sorry if you kind if you kind of asked this. <laughs> I think I just need more clarification. Um, so what if, and maybe I'm just interpreting this last section incorrectly too. Um, so someone coming into USG or someone that's already here, but potentially someone that's coming in, um, will have to state that they are interested in this position or is it like is it something that we advertise is part of usg um that's also kind of up for discussion i definitely just presented it as like a this is something that i do want us to have but very much open discussion in terms of like the logistics of all of it um so initially what i was thinking is that um like, you know how people kind of identify which committees they want to be on or something like that, even just having like one question of like, would you be interested in having a relationship with Bonfire? Because I know that there's like a lot of people that join and like know about Bonfire um, and kind of have that relationship already or have that desire to be a part of it. Like I remember last time we spoke about this, both um, Matthew and Dahlia expressed that kind of interest. So even just having it on like the application form is okay. Um, or other than that, it can just be something that we talk about at one of our first meetings for the semester. Um, and then I was also thinking that like every semester it's like subject to change. So either the same person can continue on for the next semester um, or we can have people like alternate through the role um, depending on, I guess, like how much interest there is. Other comments? Okay, so if there are no comments, then- I'm sorry, oh. I did have a comment. Go ahead. I think this is a really good um, position, but I, I don't think this the representative should be nominated. I think it's something that could be selected. And I think this could be a position that goes to the like an extra position that goes to the campus life committee. And this is something like the student who occupied this position could be chosen by the, by the campus life committee chair. It could be like, kind of like a deputy chair in a way. And it just, I, I don't know if it makes sense. Like instead of being, cause nominated it's when students are nominated, this is a cabinet position. So these are committee chairs, this is, um, all the positions that are part of the cabinet and that include a stipend. But if this is a position more like a deputy chair or uh, intern speaker, then this could be something that someone chooses, either the president, uh, but for me, it makes sense if it goes to the campus life committee because it would be part of like campus life. Uh, but I don't know, 
how others feel about it. That makes sense. Does anyone from campus life have anything to say? I'm not campus life, but I have a comment. Uh, I think I agree with what Danny said. Um, I don't think that should be nominated and I don't think it should be a cabinet position. Um, but in the past, what we've had has been under the PRC committee, we've had a webmaster and we've had a graphic designer. So that's not necessarily, well, that has been a paid position. Um, but for the, um, I think I, I think what Danny was trying to say that it could be, you know, you have a position of a deputy chair and then you have the position of the li liaison. Um, and it doesn't need to be paid, but it could be just an appointed position within campus life or any other committee that, um, that you know, deals with stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think the, the fact that it's, that you're not paid as a bonfire writer in the first place kind of lends itself to also not being paid to be the liaison. Um, I don't think that really makes sense to me, but uh, I think that it, I don't think it necessarily has to be specifically tied to any given um, committee, if that makes sense. I don't, I don't know how beneficial that would be because say I say, say someone's super interested in being the liaison, but they also aren't, but they, they also want to do a different part of USG. I think that, that kind of excluding them from being able to do both would be a negative. Yeah, I think um, having like applications for the role for anyone who's interested would be like the best way to go about it. Um, like Campus Life Committee is obviously happy to work with them, but um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like only an us thing. Um, so I think anyone who's interested should just apply. And their position can like work with us clo like, very closely. And I think that, that would be helpful, but I don't think that it should be exclusive to us. I think that's a great point, Michelle. I agree, but then I also think if this position is not going to have a report, then how are we going to know what this person is doing? Like, how are we going to keep them accountable? Um, so that's why I was also putting like a committee chair, kind of like as a as kind of like a supervisor of that role. So whenever this person is doing something, then the committee chair could inform us of that during the report. Um, so yeah. It, but that also makes complete sense. So maybe the president could include this in the report. I'm not sure. Or no, I, the I chief of staff. I'm not sure. I think that's a great point. Uh, I think that I, I think that you're right in that we want to keep the that they should work with the committee chair of campus life closely. So like they should work together with them, but uh, it just shouldn't be any specific person also or any chair could report it. That also works whichever one that they worked with most closely. Yeah, I agree with Queen. Like, oh, I'm sorry, am I cutting somewhere? Uh, I just think like, for example, like if Canvas like a committee like in charge of it, kind of, of like whoever worked with us, then they just kind of need to like go on our like meeting, just like tell us, tell the chairwoman about what's happening and then like reporting back, I guess. This doesn't have to be specifically us doing this. Yeah, I think it would be great if the li liaison could uh, work with all the committees closely because the purpose of this person is to report what USG is doing to a uh, bonfire so they can like write about it or you know inform people. I have a comment. I have a comment. I just got really excited. I'm sorry. Um, so in that case, Matthew, what you're saying, would that be kind of like the deputy chair for the chief of staff? Maybe, maybe. Because they're the like, chief of staff is a person that works with everybody, right? But chief of staff doesn't have a deputy chair. So if if that person was kind of like the chief of staff's deputy chair, they would kind of have to work with all the committees and report on the committee. So does that make sense? Sorry, I got really excited. That that is exciting. That that makes sense organizationally to me. Yeah, I like the idea. But also, could we put more responsibilities to that person so it's not like a bonfire li liaison could also could be part of that, but also just helping Matthew in like whatever it's needed, um, like scheduling, yeah, whatever is needed. So uh, instead of like, yeah, go ahead. 
I, I honestly think that it's a position that would require enough like attentiveness and like work that it's okay as like a standalone that it doesn't have to go with any committee but like the expectation would be that that person is active within initiatives that they find interesting and things like that um so yeah someone that kind of like works with the chief of staff and like I know Matthew does like the individual meetings with all of the like cabinet members. Um, so like, it could be that they're expected to be at those um, and kind of facilitate as like a like note taker for those meetings. Um, but yeah, like I, I think there's enough work for the position itself that I don't think it needs to be like, oh, they're not gonna have enough to do. Um, and then my other thing was that I don't want to limit it to a single committee because since it is a new position, I first want to see how much interest there is kind of like from semester to semester. Um, and if it so happens that there is minimal interest, then yeah, perhaps assigning it to a committee and having one person from the committee every semester be holding that position would be okay. Um, but as of right now, kind of leaving it open-ended would be better. Um, at least that's what I think. And then my other question for the group is that if we're going to make it like um, an actual position, I would prefer it to be in the bylaws. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that is, um, I, I mean, it would be good to be filled every year, but we can leave it so that it's not like, the world is going to crumble if it, it's not there. Um, so yeah, I just mentioned that, Daisy, because I know last time you said that it was a little um, too intangible for it to be in the bylaws. Um, and so that's why I specifically mentioned the handbook. But are our opinions different on that now? I think, um, well, it depends because the bonfire could, you know, it could be here this year, maybe not here next year. So it just depends. But I think if we were going to add it to the bylaws, it might have to be added under its own separate position, not necessarily category. Um, our categories right now are executive and legislative. So I guess they could go under the, under the legislative um, and we could say that it's an optional position. Um, so it doesn't, like we don't need to have anybody like, you know, um, every single time if nobody's interested, uh, it, we could say it's optional. So if anybody wants to fill it, uh, and I also think it would be great if they worked with or under the chief of staff, maybe not as the deputy chair, but just you know under the chief of staff as somebody who oversees the entire USG process. I think deputy chairs are in the bylaws. I know that I have the interim speaker in the bylaws. Okay, if that's the case, can I request that one of you help me word that and what that looks like? Yes. Cool, and then we can amend the resolution as it stands um, and then bring it up next meeting again. Um, depending on how much time you need, if you'd like, you're welcome to table it and then bring it back whenever you're ready with it. Okay, yeah, so can we table it for today's discussion, unless anyone has anything else they want to add? Uh, would you like to make a motion? I motion to table this resolution for now. All right, so there has been a motion to table resolution 2021-S5-1000 until further notice. Um, all those in favor of tabling this resolution, please say aye. 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 All that opposed, please say nay. Does anybody abstain? All right. This resolution has been tabled until further notice. So Hannah, let me know, we can work on it and let me know whenever you're ready to put it back to um, be looked at again. All right, and next we have resolution 2021-S5-803. Ansha, would you like to present it? 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Daisy. Uh, so this is the Chess Club merchandise collaboration. Um, and the chief sponsors are Matthew and I, and the co-sponsors are Mohammed, Matt, and Megan. So whereas the undergraduate student government has funds allocated for external organizations to help the undergraduate student body, and whereas UIC Chess Club is a UIC affiliated club on campus and USG seeks to promote student involvement within the student body, and whereas the UIC Chess Club aims to boost solidarity among its members by providing merchandise, and whereas USG will be branded alongside UIC Chess Club on their merchandise, further showing USG's involvement on campus, and let it be resolved that USG will contribute $400 to purchase UIC Chess Club merchandise. All right, I would like to open up the floor for discussion. Any comments, questions, concerns? This will be a resolution that we'll be voting on next week. Before we move on, are there any comments, questions, or concerns? Dre? No, I'm sorry. I did it by accident. No questions. No problem. Or comment. Any questions? Anything else? All right. Uh, if there are no questions, we'll be voting on this resolution next week. Um, and then the last resolution we have, which is not on here, and then Wasan, if you could stop sharing, um, will be resolution 2021-S5-403. Uh, Aitana? Can you see it? Yes. Awesome. So resolution 2021-S5403, purchasing promotional items. The chief sponsor is me, and then the co-chief sponsor, the co-sponsor is Sara Khan. Whereas promotional items are tools to aid USG's outreach and recognition efforts by raising awareness uh, through image repetition, since students will see our brand logo on the items as they use it, as well as create some sort of tangible connection with it. And whereas, along with the giveaways, purchasing USG member exclusive items, such as the apparel items, will promote a sense of community among USG representatives during remote learning where we cannot physically work together and create connections. Then let it be resolved, PRC shall purchase the items listed below. A hoodie, there'll be 20 of those. Um, a crew neck, there'll be 20 of those. I'm basing these off from the forms I've sent last week. And um, the t-shirt, there'll be 10 of those. Water bottle, 100. Um, pens, $500, I mean 500 items. Um, notepads, 150 items, keychain, 200 items, sticker version one, 500 items, and sticker version two, 500 items, um, for a total item of 2,000 items for 3,201.71. For an approximate total, not counting the amount of shipping and tax after checkout, of 3,201.71 for 2,000 items. Right. Thank you, Aitana. I'd like to open up the floor, uh, floor for discussion. Any comments, questions, anything about this resolution? I do have a question for the body. Is the amount okay? Do you think the amount is sufficient enough? Do you mean the amount of uh, the merchandise or the amount in the uh, funding? Um, the amount in items. Um, I do have a question. So some of this is going to be given out to like students not in student government, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm purchasing a lot because hopefully when we get back in the fall semester of 2021, we can start USG promotion as early as possible. Because I know this process takes a long time. That's a great point. Okay, um, this will be a resolution that we'll be voting on next week. Uh, but before we close off with the resolution, anything else? Any comments, questions? Can I make a motion to change something? Um, I misspelled something in the yes. grammar. I'm going to locate it. Oh, there's okay. Uh, you see efforts by raising awareness of through. Can we remove of in between awareness and through, please? 
Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat where that was? So, um, whereas promotional items, that part, um, efforts by raising awareness of, let's remove of, and then just put awareness through image repetition. You really need a motion for that. <laughs> Um, okay, does anybody oppose to removing the of part of it? This part. I motion to amend. <laughs> okay, there has been a motion to amend um, the resolution so that the of is removed. Um, uh, okay, hold on, sorry, give me one second. <laughs> um, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 All that opposed, please say nay. Does anybody abstain? Okay, the amendment has passed. Um, anything else? Yes. Um, one second. My ask in the in the chat. So, which ones are going to be given to students, and which ones are for our for the body? All right. Fantastic question. So, the apparel is mostly for uh, the apparel is USG member exclusive items. Um, I'm. So like the hoodie, the crew neck, and the t-shirt. And if there's some leftovers, they'll be given to new members because I didn't account for new members who'd be joining in the 2021 semester. Um, and then as for the water bottles and pens, of course, USG members right now will have access to them and can have them in, in their care package. But um, the remaining will be for, uh, for promotional giveaways. So the water bottle, the pens, the notepads, the keychains, and the stickers. Anything else? Okay. I'm reporting, sorry, I'm reporting this next week. Yes, right? Yes, yes. So in that case, is it possible, because I'm not sure if you already asked for it, and Angie also asked for that. Um, is it possible to add um, to allow new members to fill the like, to fill the form so they can be included in the merge? Yeah, we can totally do that. No problem. Elsa? I think. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. You go ahead, please. I was going to ask Hitana, um if uh, when the new members fill out the form, do you think it's still going to be enough merchandise from this resolution to cover their merchandise as well? Could you remind me how many new members have joined USG? Four members. So there were 17 for the hoodies. I rounded up to 20. So there will be not enough if they choose a hoodie, if all four of them choose hoodies. Mm. Okay. Have you also accounted for the students that left USG? Like they, no, they... I have not because um, the form that I released was from two weeks ago. Yeah, let's. I can I can check with you who, who has left since then, um, uh, and yeah, we can verify that. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out next week. Okay, cool. I would recommend that we send the form to the new members and then see how they respond, and then if if we need to order more, then we can amend that next week. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, as mentioned in my report. The timeline, the approximate end of this initiative is around mid to late March. So there's plenty of, uh, of timeline time for this. So if you need to amend any numbers, we can totally do that. Okay, let me know if you would like to table it and then we can come back whenever you'd like. Uh, otherwise, this will be voted on next week. I have one more question. Um, and I don't know like how much trouble this would be. Actually, okay, question is, does it say UIC anywhere on our USG logo? Um, let me, give me a second. So USG. Yeah, I think it does. I think the one for the hoodie does. Yeah, it says mm -hmm. University of Illinois at Chicago on the circular okay. pattern. What about the crew neck? The crew neck? Oh yes, give me one moment, please. Let me expand that for you. So the crew neck. My suggestion is just that like we should maybe have UIC on like all of it and add like with USG also. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, then would you like, oh my gosh, everything became so big. Give me a moment. So 
for these, this is the main logo of USG. But there is you um, at the University of Illinois at Chicago at the bottom, it's in tiny letters. Would that work or do you want me to add another photo for UIC? No, just stick with this pattern. It's sufficient. It's kind of definitely up to you. That was just a point to make. Okay. Don't make too much extra work for yourself, basically. <laughs> Um, as for the question about the crew neck, this is the crew neck, there's the UAC logo and undergraduate student government. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions before we move on? All right, if not, then we can move on to the next order of business items for discussion. Um, so, Wasan, would you like to screen share? And then our first item for discussion is the behavioral mental health crisis counseling team. Um, yeah. And sorry. That's you, so right? sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, that one, that one was me. Um, but I was just thinking since I, there's like a bit of stuff to go through on there. Um, and since we're kind of cresting on nine o'clock, um, I was hoping to actually just move to table this until next week. Um, so. um, you don't need to move. I, I can just table it. No problem. Thank you so much. Well, not table it, but like I'll just put it on for next week. Um, okay. Uh, the next one is GPA recalculation policy. Tega. Okay. Um, it, Wasan, can you scroll to the letter that we sent out, please? So everyone can read it. Because I don't know if they did read it, but I don't know if you guys need like a minute or two to go through it. That'll be great. Um, or maybe just, I guess, like a point of information, um, like Chairman Obira, do you want to just share some of the highlights of what we're trying to accomplish here? Oh, yeah, of course. So the just to give you like a brief background. So UIC's current GPA recalculation policy is um, if you have a D and an F in the class, you can retake the class once without written permission. But on your cumulative grade point average, the um, it the average of your the two scores of the class you've retaken would be calculated into your GPA. So the whole point of this um, policy that this letter that we sent out was to have a grade replacement clause instead. So essentially, what would happen is when you do retake a class, the first grade would be excluded from your GPA. And it does make sense because the whole point is to give students the opportunity to repair their GPAs because a lot of different barriers do affect why people don't do well in a class. So that was why we sent it out. And then, of course, to it, we put some, some ways to alleviate some of the concerns because some of the concerns were due to financial aid standing and people repeating classes they didn't need to repeat and obviously trying, um, obviously not having people stay in university longer than they need to. And of course, you mentioned in there that people, students need to understand that both grades would be on the transcript and um, graduate schools would, could take those into consideration. The only big change would be the GPA being better. And if a student opts for this replacement policy, the second grade replaces the first grade, even though it is worse than the first grade. And where a student is involved in at an academic integrity violation, they will not be able to repeat the grade for, you know, grade replacement. And um, yeah, so by the fifth week of school, the paperwork to ensure that this grade replacement is done should be submitted then to the registrar. And that's essentially what we talked about. And we pointed that the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign has implemented this grade replacement policy, um, grade replacement clause, and it seems to be working well for them. So we're just kind of advising that we too have the opportunity to present the same kind of opportunity for students at, here at UIC. All right, um, does anybody have any comments, questions, anything? Yeah, to go along with this uh, letter, do you have uh, like testimonials from students? So we just sent this out as an initial letter just to the provost, it already got sent out. So we're still waiting okay. on. Any comments?
Tega, uh, if I may ask, uh, did you add this to the items for discussion because you wanted uh, us to talk about it or just to show us? Um, just to kind of get a general feel of what everyone feels um, about having the replacement policy like this. And just to like let you know, obviously, what has been done, that this work has, it has gone through. And I guess just like a point of information, like I also just wanted more of like our cabinet members to share some of the work that they've done, whether it's like writing letters or putting out like a list of recommendations, because um, if there is something that's like so substantive that's coming out of USG, like I hope that, you know, everyone gets a chance to kind of look through it. Anything else? Yeah, I'd just like to say this would be very beneficial for um, students retaking courses. And I think this is something that should have been implemented a long time ago. Any last comments before we move on? Okay, so in that case, we can move on to the next item for discussion which is USG sports, um, sorry, USG collaboration with sports teams. Uh, yeah, oh, Matthew, did you wanna take this? You can. Sure, um, you can just uh, start it off. Okay, um, I'll just share my screen, screen. Oh, never mind. Never mind. it's okay. It's okay. Um, <laughs> um, just really quickly, cause I know we're pressing on time. Um, so we met, me, Matthew, and Michelle um, met, um, and we talked about like kind of what this would mean, what it would look like, um, how it would benefit both the athletics and student government and the student body in general. Um, and we thought of some ideas of how to implement this. Um, you know, we thought about gear, we thought about, uh, you know, just different things. One of the main things that we thought would be great is like, you know, during the season, we could provide um, maybe like uh, giveaways where we per we would offer dinner for the winners of a raffle or something and then they would be able to go to the game and they would get like courtside seats. Um, they're pretty much always open unless a certain organization partners with the game that certain day. Maybe during the season we partner um, so like student government partners with uh, one of the partners with the athletics for one of the games um, and we can, you know, sponsor one of the games um, and just get uh, more or student organizations to participate in the games, participate in athletics in general, um, and just build more of a student like body spirit around athletics and stuff. Much as much of the same spirit that you see in schools that have football teams and stuff. Of course, again, it's harder here because we don't have a football team and we are a commuter school. Um, and on that note, part of uh, where we would start with this is with the housing students. We would just start with getting campus housing students more excited about going games. And then we think it would snowball into commuter students. Um, so yeah, Matthew. Yeah, so does uh, anyone have any ideas for this or any questions about um, the work we're about to do? Any comments, questions? We know it's late, so if you guys have any ideas later, feel free to hit us up. Matthew drew a fantastic sketch of a, a shirt that we could po possibly do. Um, so Matthew, I encourage you to share that in the group chat if you still have a screenshot of it. Um, but if you guys also have any ideas of what certain merch could look like, um, we do wanna put student government like name on it uh, in some way, so yeah. Yeah, so actually, I was, I was about to uh, pull up the whiteboard and draw it up again, but um, I'll, I'll save that for another time. But something I did want to talk about when we were talking about this uh, last Friday and just now, I'm, I'm wondering what you guys think about what if we had representatives be, um, like representatives for specific like organizations or clubs like li liaisons, except um, they'll be not like really like working really closely with these um, organizations, but just like more so as a, like a point of contact. Uh, because something I'm working on is like, you know, fostering relationships with organizations. And obviously not, um, there's a lot of organizations here at UIC, not 
like one person can't like handle them all. So I'm wondering if like we should have uh, representatives just take on like maybe like two or three organizations. Um, you know, you, you see this in other student governments where like they're like senators for um, for specific organizations or just like a point of contact. So I'm wondering what you guys think about that. Uh, I, I think it's a great idea. I think it's, um, it's a large undertaking. Um, it's something we can talk about tomorrow at our meeting, Matthew, or uh, maybe with the advisors at some point as well. Yeah, for sure. I don't think it should be a requirement, but I do think that it's a really, a really positive thing that could be really good for you at USG. I don't know if it would be um, able to work if, um, so for example, if you just say introduce yourself at the beginning of the year um then what happens if you know a certain member leaves and now they're not a contact anymore um you know i i don't know if it's i think it would just be okay if we kept it the way it is which is you know when you need something you contact them you introduce yourselves otherwise i don't know if you know just just having them know you will do anything especially if you don't need like any help from them that semester. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. That's why um, like I, I would think these representatives would be under the campus life uh, committee. And so like, you know, yeah, organizations don't really come to us a lot. So like, they'll just be like, if you need something, you'll just contact them because obviously um, I'm thinking that like in the future, at least uh, organizations will like be more aware of USG and like what we can do for them and such. I think it's a good idea. Um, the only thing is it's a pretty large thing to take on. Um, and I feel like everybody's plate is already pretty full. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but for me it feels that way. Um, so I don't know if it the added stress will be, you know, worth that relationship that we might or might not use. Um, however, I think maybe introducing USG to a certain organization would be something that a committee does, uh, but not like it's only if they can undertake that. I also had a comment, but it was related to the previous um, point with um, giving athletics or like giving out kind of like free marriage and, and all of this. Um, I definitely get the point of being able to raise UIC spirit, but I also don't know if this fits USG's um, purpose, because of course we want to make sure that UIC is us together, like we're an amazing family and, and I get how that could be related to USG, but I don't know if it feels like, I don't know if it fits completely the purpose of USG, which is, would be advocacy. I don't know if our like relationship with uh, all the sports teams should be more focused on reaching out to them and asking them how we can advocate for their needs. Because like there is, for example, CSI spends like a lot of money in getting like all this free marriage and like distributing. Yeah, I don't know if it's really like what our department should be focusing on right now. Um, yeah. Any other comments before we close it off? All right, well, thank you guys for sticking with us. Um, in that case, we can move on to the next order of business, which is adjournment. Um, would anyone like to adjourn the, or the motion to adjourn the meeting? Would anyone like to motion? A motion to adjourn. All right, there has been a motion. Is there a second? I second. All right, it has been moved and seconded to adjourn this meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All that opposed, say Does anyone abstain? All right, the ayes have it. Uh, the meeting is now adjourned at 8.59. Thank you guys for sticking with us.